Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Elliott Field here on the campus of Fitchburg State University, where today the Fitchburg State Falcons take on the Owls of Westfield State University. I'm John Gugarty, joined as always by Dan Bolek. It is homecoming here at Elliott Field. So folks who are in Fitchburg, we absolutely encourage you, come on down to Elliott Field. You can see there, good crowd, although you know plenty of seats still available. There's all kinds of fun activities coming on just behind us here at the press box. We saw there's a there's a mechanical bull shaped like a football. There's Connect Four with basketball. There's some weird soccer dart abomination. But Dan, that is all secondary to the very important football game we have here on tap today. Absolutely, it's a quest to avoid the wooden spoon for these two teams in Fitchburg State and Westfield State. The Falcons coming in with a one and six record. Westfield 0 and seven and both an imperfect 0 and five in MassCAC play. These teams both trying to avoid finishing in last place, and it's going to be a big game for both squads today, trying to get that first MassCAC win of the season. Fitchburg State losers of their last five consecutive games, as you mentioned, Dan. In that time, the Falcons have been outscored by a score of 222 to 26. That's uh, not terribly good. It in is, my estimation. It is not. The defense has struggled. They've given up 42 points a game this season. However, they're facing a Westfield State squad that has somehow had even more struggles defensively, giving up 45.4 points a game. That's eighth worst in all of Division Three football. Not just the MASCAC, not just New England, all of Division Three football. Fitchburg State taking on one of the lower-ranked defenses, let's say. It's been a challenge for the Owls. 0-7 coming in. They lost Trayvon Holder, a star run back tied for the all-time Westfield State record for rushing touchdowns. That was a big blow on offense for them. On defense, they lost Zach Howard, linebacker, defensive player of the year for Westfield State last year. He graduated as well as Trayvon Holder, and it's just been a challenge for the Owls to get replacements there. They are rebuilding very much so. They were 5-5 five and five last year, but it's been a bit of a struggle for Westfield. But they just like Fitchburg, believe they've got a great opportunity to get a win today. It's a very similar outlook for both teams. Neither team doing terribly much on the offensive side of the ball. Fitchburg State actually averaging just over five points per game. That's last in the conference and fourth worst in all of Division Three football. Westfield State, though, as you said, they concede more than 45 points a game. It's that classic matchup, the resistible force versus the movable object. <laughs> That is how it looks like for Westfield. Their offensive struggle, their defensive struggles have gotten so bad that Jake Cassidy, who started the season as their starting quarterback, has converted to the secondary. He's a starting corner now for the Owls. And Westfield will be looking to Andrew Pelcher to try to lead the offense again for the Owls today, making his third start of the season. And honestly, a lot of times when you, know, you hear the phrase, the starting quarterback got converted to defense, you don't think it's because they need the defensive help. But, I mean, Jake Cassidy's numbers are not terribly impressive, but they're by no means disastrous on the season. He was averaging roughly 50% completion rate, averaging nearly 10 yards per completion. So... In terms of you know what you expect from a Division Three quarterback, Cassidy was not doing an abysmal job leading the Owl offense, but their defense just needs that help. And for that reason, Westfield State will be led today by Andrew Pelcher. Yep. Fitchburg State, of course, led by their quarterback, Connor Fitzsimons, didn't have a terribly good week in his last game. That was the road loss to Mass Maritime, just 15 out of 41, 129 yards and three picks. And he threw a touchdown to the other team. For the third time this season. It's been a rough go for Connor Fitzsimons as a starter. That's one of his worst performances of the season, probably one of the worst of his career. But he sees a prime chance to bounce back today. We mentioned a couple weeks ago, Connor Fitzsimons, he never faced Framingham before a couple weeks ago. This time, he actually has faced Westfield, and not only that, he's beaten Westfield back tell, in his freshman year. Tell us more. Yes, absolutely. Back in 2016, the last time the Falcons defeated the Owls, Connor Fitzsimons went 13 for 21 through the air, 125 yards, three touchdowns, three picks, helped lead the Falcons to a 26-8 to eight victory. That was back in his freshman year. You know, they had the injuries to, they had the injury to Garrett Delechiai. They had the ineffectiveness of James Antonelli. They went to Fitzsimons. He got a chance to get some reps, and he took advantage of it and then some that year. 
And of course, the last couple of years, we've seen different quarterbacks try to step up, take the challenge there. But now, with those all having gone by the wayside, Fitzsimons, he's earned a starting job this year. And he's been trying, but he's had his struggles. Teams are about ready to head to midfield for the coin toss. The Falcon captains today are Rich Austin, Connor Briggs, David Morales sporting a very lovely shade of blue on that left knee brace today. And Jesse Brown, the senior receiver who has been one of Connor Fitzsimons' favorite targets on the year. The Falcons did not have the services of Jesse Brown last week. We saw him get hurt in the Framingham game. It's good to see he's fully suited up and ready to play today. Another guy who will be contributing to the Falcon offense who hasn't been seen as much lately is Bubba Lynch. Lynch has been sidelined for the past couple of weeks, but he did play in the last game against Mass Maritime. We expect to see him get some significant time in the backfield today. Kind of the, the Swiss Army knife early in the season, Bubba Lynch doing kickoffs and playing linebacker, and now he's settling in as a tailback as he finishes off his junior season. Still has another year left after this as well. And that'll definitely help the Falcons next year. Captains for the Owls are Jake Cassidy, Jack Buckley. I believe I saw Chris Saba in there, big number 75, and Evan Garvey on the far right. You know, he goes to Bree Bart a lot. He's on the far right. Uh, Political humor. As the Falcons take the field, the coin toss is in the air. Have you ever seen a referee catch the coin in the air? Because that's what this referee did. It did strike me as a little bit odd. Often you see them let it bounce to the ground and read it from there, but instead he caught it in the air. He didn't even turn it over to his other hand. No, he, he just, just kind of caught it and was like, it's, it's this one. So the Owls won the toss and deferred. The Falcons' offense will be the first Gentlemen, to take the field. As our referee uh, hopefully figures out what to do with his microphone. Fingers crossed. Hope springs eternal and all that. And as the Falcons head to the sideline and get ready for action here at Elliott Field, we will step aside for the national anthem. But don't go anywhere. Fitchburg State University football is coming up next right here on FATV. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise as we honor America with the playing of our national anthem. Fitchburg State University football here on FATV. We'd like to thank our football underwriters for helping to bring this and all football telecasts to you here at home. We want to thank North End Subaru, 757 Chase Road in Lunenburg, IC Credit Union, 300 Bemis Road in Fitchburg, the Grand Rental Station, 88 Massachusetts Avenue in Lunenburg, Romano's Market, 138 Harvard Street in Fitchburg, Fitchburg State University, find them at 160 Pearl Street here in Fitchburg, Neshoba Valley Medical, 
Medical Center, 200 Groton Road in Air, and last but not least, Red Apple Farm, a 455 Highland Ave in Phillipston. Now, Dan, it is an absolutely incredible day for football. Folks in Fitchburg should definitely come on down to Elliott Field. But if you're in Westfield or anywhere in this great land of ours, where can you watch this game? FATV.org, the education stream, like you see all FATV sporting events involving schools, which is all of them. That is. And our grounds for removal from the We don't cover uh, Dirt Dogs baseball when that was a thing. We had not. Westfield State is about ready to kick it away and here with the play-by-play -play for the first quarter away. is Mr. Dan Bolak. Thank you very much, John. Looks like Robert Jackson and Malik Crawford all the way back to receive the kick and it's going to be Crawford who'll take it around the 10 yard line, try to bring it out to the near side, still on a good run here to the near sideline, trying to stay in bounds, dances on the sideline, but gets to about the 40 yard line, a good run back there from Malik Crawford. Looked for a second there like Crawford was gonna be able to turn the corner and really get something big out of this one. Lisandro Colon was able to push him out of bounds. Definitely a bit of a different look all the way back receiving for the Falcons there. For Crawford, it's only his second kick return of the season. Pittsburgh State's tried a few guys back there. Tried to make something happen on the special teams unit. Connor Fitzsimons leads his offense out on first and 10. Steve Lawton is the starting tailback. He'll take it on first down on an end around. Now Robert Jackson will take it out to the near side. Fitzsimons trying to go upfield as a blocker, and ultimately Jackson, Jackson is able to get to the 44-yard line. A little bit of trickeration there from the, the Falcons. You said Lawton was lined up as the tailback. They had Robert Jackson split out wide. He takes the pitch from Lawton, winds up gaining about seven yards. Very good first run for the Falcons. Definitely a play we haven't seen yet this season. Mentioned Westfield State doesn't have the best defense. Might be a chance for the Falcons to dig a little deeper into their playbook. Try a few plays they might have been hesitant about earlier in the year. Lawn in the backfield in I formation. Frank Sims there as a fullback. They'll wrap up Lawn as he goes to the right side. He'll be just short of the line to gain, but it'll be third and a very manageable one. See the Falcons a lot of time line up either shotgun or with a single back formation. Mullins, Usually when Sims is on the field, he's has a second tight end. Haven't seen too much of that eye formation from them. Got a couple there, it'll be now third down and one. We'll go with the same formation. Sims as the fullback and JC Santiago as the running back this time. And it'll be Santiago trying to get that yard it's gonna be pretty close. I don't think he's Tango there. The now this is this is pretty much right in front of where we're situated here in the press box. I think he's maybe no half game. the length of the football short. The officials aren't even gonna bring in the chains. They're just gonna say fourth down. I mean, for the love of God, go for it, right? Yes. It's fourth and Mullins one on your own 46, your one pit. and six. Fourth and one. You need to go for this, and the Falcon offense agrees. This would be the time to do it. Just line up under center, go QB sneak. You need a foot, go get a foot. We've seen them pull it off this year. And Fitzsimons goes under center, going to hand it off to Law, and he blasts into the pile. He will get the first down. Brings it all the way to midfield, a four yard gain. Stop the clock and move the chains. That's a first down for the Falcons. Lawton had the first down before he even hit the pile, a yard and a half downfield. But then with second effort, he picks up three more. Spot the ball right at the midfield stripe. Falcons Fitchburg gets a fresh set of downs. Two and a half gone here in this first quarter. Falcons on the first drive of the contest. But Simon's out of the pistol with Lawn in the backfield. It will be a handoff to Lawn. Finds some space on the left side. And gets about three yards on that one. Before wrapped up by George Cole. Cole just kind of jumped on his back and wrestled him down. Nothing fancy with that tackle, but it George was very Cole much effective. Had the hit for Westfield. Lawton, 5'10", 175 Second pounds, a sophomore from Ayer. George Cole, six feet tall, 186 from Chelmsford. He's a senior. Came into the game with 65 tackles. You know, Dan, I gotta say, these Westfield State uniforms are gorgeous, aren't they? They're very nice uniforms. The road whites for the Owls today. Crisp, clean, classic uniforms. Broadcasters love to see it. 
There's a great run up the middle that time for Lawton. He gets into Owls territory, past the 40-yard line, another first down for the Green and Gold. You know, Dan, this is something we've been calling out from the broadcast booth all season. The Falcons send a tight end in motion, and the play always is a run going that way. This time, they run the counter. They sent Rittenauer in motion to the left, and they ran a counter with Lawton going to the right, opened up a big hole in the Owl defense, picked up the first down. From the 39-yard line, first in 10 for the Falcons. Fitzsimons drops back to pass, looking, throws over the middle, incomplete. Connor Fitzsimons pass He's trying to find incomplete. Sims there. Elijah Ellis had the coverage for Westfield State. He swatted that down. Joseph Haskins, the intended Fourth broken receiver. up pass of the season for the junior from Derby, Connecticut in Elijah Ellis. Elijah Ellis. Fitzsimons had plenty Applied of time to, to throw. Picked out 10. his man, pass was just a little high, and Ellis was all over the intended receiver. Will be second and 10 now. Two receivers to the left side. Haskins is lined up as a wide receiver as Lawton will take it up the middle. Another good run for him. About eight yards on that run down at the 31 yard line. Just great blocking by the Falcon offensive line. Lawton's into the second level before he's even touched. I mentioned on that play, Joe Haskins lining up as a wide receiver. That's what he's listed as on the roster. That is literally that is literally the first time this season I've actually seen him line up as a wide receiver. I, he punts. He's ostensibly the backup quarterback, but he's also a receiver. Well, the Falcons didn't throw in that direction. We have a timeout here with 10.27 to go in the first quarter. Didn't see an indication of who took that timeout, did you? Pittsburgh did take the timeout, we can confirm. So 10.27 to go in the first, no score, but the Falcons are threatening with a third and two, 31 yards from Pater. You know, Dan, it's third and two. You're at the 31, you're probably going for it on fourth down. I wonder if they might take a shot at the end zone here. Go play action, try to hit Jesse Brown well deep. The baseball team here at Fitchburg State. I like that idea. Today. Remember, get to get your I've tickets. had worse ideas, I'm sure. All food sales will be but it looks like Brown's going to be on the, the sidelines for this one. So they've got Josh Nelson split out to the far side with Mizzy Jillo Aquendo. No receivers out to the left. Third and two. Yep, just those two lined up near side right in the I formation behind Fitzsimons. One tight end and Sims as a fullback. They go to Lawton. They guessed run, they guessed right. No gain on the play. Lawton gains about a yard. They give him the 30, but it brings up fourth and one now. And again, you've, you've got to think the Falcon offense will stay on the field. Fourth and one. 47 yards would be ambitious for a field goal. And I would hate all year the idea of punting from your own 30 on a fourth and one. Yeah. From the opponent's 30. I mean, I would hate punting up on your own 30 on fourth and one, never mind the opponent's 30. Falcons will go with the I formation again. Going to be Lawton trying to work his way through. It's going to come down to forward progress. It's going to be pretty close. I think he's short. Steven Lawton, the ball carrier. Looking at the sticks, it looks like he had to get right to the 29, and the officials are spotting him just a little short of that. They're going to measure. My gut says short. What do you think, Dan? I'm leaning towards short, but it's all going to come down to where they've placed the clip. It's like if it's exactly where they had it right or if maybe they're Officials off by just a little a bit. Of course, the angle from the scissor lift is a little bit off center. That is a first down. By the smallest of margins, the Falcons get the first down. First Just by the nose of the, the football, the second fourth down conversion of this drive for Fitchburg State. It'll keep it moving. This Falcon drive already Fitch, gone a little over five minutes. From the Westfield 29. So on first and 10, Jill Oquendo to the right side. It'll be Nelson and Haskins to the left, and Lawton in the backfield. They'll put Rittenauer in motion to the right. It's gonna be another handoff. Lawton 
trying to drive for a lot of owls there a lot of great driving force by the falcons to get a few extra yards Lawton plunges right into the line you'd think he by all rights be dead there but no it's not just his effort as well he's also got connor nemerwitz basically shoving him from behind Nemerowitz, the right tackle for the Falcons. Pittsburgh gets six on that one. He'll bring up second and four. Go to Lawton again, shakes out of a tackle, and he's able to get a first down. Ball came out at the end, but he was down by then. Dan, this should have been a loss of three yards. It should have been at least that. Watch the top of your screen coming unblocked before being shouldered down by Will Jamison. David White thought he was going to blow that play up in the backfield. Instead, he got blown up. The entire crowd here at Elliott Field erupted with that block by Jamison. Well done there by the O-line for the green and gold. And now into the red zone, 18 yards to goal. First and 10 with 8.15 to go in this first quarter. But Simons will hand it off to Bubba Lynch. Lynch trying to shake out of a tackle, but that time David White would not be deterred. And he actually holds Bubba Lynch to a loss there. White tried the right side on that last play and got knocked on his backside. This time he figures, eh, maybe I'll rush from the left. And he's able to blow up the play in the backfield, cause a loss of three on the carry for Bubba Lynch. Second and 13. So second and 13. We haven't seen too many plays from the Falcons on this drive that went backwards. I think that was the first one. I believe so as well. Lynch will remain in the backfield. Sims is a fullback. Owl jump there. Throw out to the left side. Well overthrown for Nelson. The time it's passed, ball's incomplete. Falcons wanted pass interference. I think they also thought they had a free play here, but there's no flag. I thought they had a free play. I thought they did too, but I stopped short of saying it because I didn't see a flag. Let's go, Shane! It'll be third down and 13 now. On the 21 yard line. Don't quite know what Lenata Chill's range is. I think they've got to get a little closer for field goal range. So, looks like four down territory for Fitchburg. But Simon's looking to his left again. He's looking for Haskins. Quarterback to quarterback, but it's only going to be a gain of three yards. Joseph Haskins with the reception. Jack Short Buckley was line. all over it. Looked for a second, Dan, like he was going to jump the route and make the pick. Fourth and 11. But instead, he was behind Haskins, brought him, brought him down immediately. We've seen Lene De Chill attempt a couple of extra points this season. I think 35, 36 yards would be a little bit of an ask for her. So not too surprising to see the Falcon offense come out now fourth and 11. They need to get to the eight yard line for a first down. And even a turnover on down still pins the Owls fairly deep. Fitzsimons will look to his right, looking to throw. He's going for the end zone, but that one hits the upright. That is the definition of overthrown. And Westfield will get the football with 6.35 to go in the first quarter. For a second, Dan, I thought they were going to get Elijah Ellis for pass interference. Right at the end of this play here, as Fitzsimons steps up and delivers the ball, you're going to see Ellis, number five, deliver a shoulder to the back of um, Joe, Haskins. Joe Haskins. Thank you. He delivers a shoulder to the back of Haskins, and ordinarily that might be grounds for a pass interference call, but uh, given that the pass fell and hit the crossbar, I think the officials ruled it an uncatchable ball. And they have every right to do so. Yeah, that was a ball that could not be caught. I honestly cannot remember the last time I've ever seen a pass do that. First play of the game for the Owls. It is a run up the middle. It was Shane Clark with the carry. 71 carries on the season the for the sophomore carrier. from Bellows Falls, Vermont. Three on the play. Try to go right behind the left guard here. Really not much doing Joseph there. Gain of a couple, call it maybe three. Second and a long seven now for the Owls. Pelcher will take the snap, look to his right. He'll throw and that is incomplete. Trying to find Cam Gallagher. Had Royale Richards all over him. Gallagher wants a flag. None is coming. We'll take a look at this one again. 
So quick throw to the right side. A little bit of tangling there, but tough to tell if Gallagher's jersey got twisted by Richards or if it just exists in a twisted state all on its own accord. The third down, fake the end around, throw to the right side, and that is overthrown, but there is a flag on the play this time. It's down at the 45-yard line, and let's see what we'll have. They wanted to find Clark coming out of the backfield. From that position, from where that flag was thrown, that would imply a defensive penalty? It's a PI of some kind. Maybe illegal contact. Holding, number six on the defense. Lily Crawford, the guilty party. That'll be a 10 yard penalty and Westfield will get the first down. Holding 10 yards in college football compared to five in the NFL. It'll set the Owls up at their own 32 and as you said, with a fresh set, a fresh set of downs. Interesting the uh, official didn't complete the uh, announcement there, just went with the hold and yeah. didn't say the rest, but... Very casual. <laughs> Clark will have the carry this time. He'll be wrapped up just past Clark the 35-yard line. Gain of about four. Joel Montero was there for the Falcons. Kellen Gonzalez had the hit for Fitchburg. Right down the middle this time. Gonzalez was able to bring him down for the Falcons. Yep. Montero was just in the area but give Gonsalves that tackle, and it'll be second down. Fake the handoff, throw tipped up in the air, incomplete. Rich Austin nearly was able to come down with that. I think he got his hand up there. Pretty sure it was Austin who made the deflection. We'll take a look at it again here. Right there, it hits Austin, falls in a place where nobody's able to take advantage of it. I think the Owls had a mismatch on the near side here, Dan. They had two receivers lined up against just one corner. Peltra was unable to take advantage. Owls 28% this season on third down. Throw to the right side is incomplete. Pass is incomplete. They wanted Kevin Fawnen, Kevin Fawnen the but well overthrown and well out of his reach. Westfield State gets one first down on the penalty, but then they go Cody three Cleveland and out on, after that. Fitchburg State's offense will get the ball back. Cody Cleveland set up to kick this one away for Westfield State. Falcons want to be aware of him. He averages 41 yards a punt with a long of 69. It's a nice leg on him. Indeed it is. Bit of a low snap, able to pick that one up, nearly blocked by Robert Jackson, able to pressure him to the point where that was not as good of a punt as he would have liked. It's gonna roll out of bounds around the 37 yard line. That's only it's about a 30 yard kick, maybe 35. And 10 from their own 37. Falcon offense will get pretty good field position, call it first and 10 at their and own the 37. The today, they marched a, a fair bit of the ways the down the winner. field, kind of sputtered the a bit when they hit the red zone. Falcons ended up on that first drive of the game, 16 plays for 44 yards and eight minutes and 25 seconds. Ordinarily a 16 play drive would gain more than 44 yards. <laughs> Levinster last night had a 16 play drive that went 99 yards for a touchdown against St. John's. This one, it's hard to think it would even be possible to get only 44 yards on a 16 play drive. First and 10, Lawton to the right hash, gets about three yards. Jake Cassidy applying the hit for the Owls. Well, you get it, 16 plays, 44 yards by getting a lot of these three yard runs and then converting fourth down. Falcons converted two and on seven. their last drive, finally stopped when they were unable to hit fourth and 11. They face now a second down and seven after the three yard run by Steve Lawton. Sims is the fullback again for the Falcons with Lawton again as the tailback. From under center, it's Simons hands off. Lawton into the pile again, gets Steve a couple Lawton. more yards, but again, another three Table or four. four. It's a decent average, but you want to get a little more than that out of him. Hey, you know, 
33. You're never going to complain about a three-yard run because if you gain three yards every time, you're eventually going to score a touchdown. Of that course, is also that, true. As you implied, eventually you're probably going to get less than three, but, you know. Falcons are 0 for 3 on third down today. But as you've mentioned, those fourth down conversions are what's helped keep the Falcons in it. And another three yard run would get you close to the sticks. Play clock about to run out here. And it hits zero. Falcons have to burn their second time out of the half with 3.40 to go in the first Time quarter. And you can see the play clock there right next to the down and distance on our score bar at the top of the screen. Vandals I just happened to glance at it and see 2-1 sort of just as Fitzsimons was going under today. center. Soccer darts, ride the mechanical football. One of the things you always have to be aware of is how much time is on score. that play clock. Additionally, alumni, are invited to the Obviously, event today. a bit the disappointing for the Falcons. They had to kill their second timeout, only have one left, and course. still 18 minutes and 40 seconds of football to play in this half. I think that's a better option than taking the five-yard penalty and winding up third down and eight. Pittsburgh's offense, both this season and today, hasn't exactly shown themselves capable of picking up those third and long with uh, any real consistency. Their third down conversion percentage coming into today, 27.3%, not just a little worse than Westfield's. That's been a challenge for them this season as well. Same formation, Lawton bounces off a tackler, bounces off another one, trying to stay on his feet. He does stay on his feet, but there are too many owls there pushing him backwards. And so they'll end the play there. Some words being exchanged after all of that. A little bit of bird on bird violence. Owls and Falcons disagreeing with each other. This play nearly blew up in the backfield right there. Watton was able to bounce it out to the right side before Four being down. brought down by an entire Haskins parliament of owls. And now Joe and Haskins will kick it away. Gallagher Westfield State was not for prepared for this. They are scrambling to send out their punt coverage team. And the owls are going to call timeout. Westfield State was caught completely off guard by the Falcons out sending Westfield. out the punting unit. Now, granted, sending out the punting unit is a bad idea, but it cost Westfield State to burn a timeout. I think it's because the last time they were in this down and distance per Earlier circumstance, today, they went for it on fourth down. This time they were lining up not to do so, and Westfield was not expecting that. And as we've mentioned, Joe Haskins, who is the Falcon punter, is also the backup quarterback. Again, men's soccer, a winner today here at Elliott Field and, by a score uh, of two Fitchburg State's first play of the game. They tried the little end around flippy do thing. Maybe, uh, maybe digging deeper into the playbook, they might find a fake punt in there. Who knows? Soccer! We'll see what we have here on fourth, fourth and one. On. Three oh one to go. Here in this first quarter, scoreless between these two squads. And whistles and a flag. I think there was just a missed time here. False start, number 25 on the offense. They were trying something. Robert Jackson goes a little too early. Sent Riddenauer in motion as well. I think the plan was that Riddenauer was going to cut up field and Haskins was going to hit him on a streak. And now he's just going to punt. Line drive kick. Going to take a bounce inside the 20-yard line and just going to keep on rolling. It'll be a solid punt for Haskins. Nice. And it will be downed at the 13-yard line. Falcons at the Westfield 12. All in all, it's about a 50-yard kick. Westfield State didn't look very much like doing anything on their first drive. They got one first down and then had to kick it away. Now Pelcher and company will find themselves pinned back fairly deep. First and 10 at their own 13-yard line. Owls first and 10 so One of the positives 13. this season from Joe Haskins is he's been fairly successful at pinning their opposition deep. It's the 12th time this season he's pinned a team inside the 20. Lisandro Colon in the backfield. Clone will take the run to the far side, trying to find some daylight. He finds A.J. Cadell instead and gets not much. What's the ball carrier? Try that far off tackle play, run into the right here. Cadell Jr. applying the hit for Fitchburg. Short gain on the play. Tried to cut it upfield, couldn't quite do so. He had Cadell and Austin chasing him down. 
Just the ninth time this year, Cologne taking a run for the Owls. This will be the tenth. Cologne, the ball carrier. Gets a couple more on that Yahoo one. Jones applying the hit for Fitchburg State. Owls definitely trying something different in their backfield. Lisandro the Cologne, the freshman from Holyoke. Someone oh, jumped there. Yep, yep, yep. That was Sean Ball Green, start, the left 72. tackle. Replay the same down. Was going to be third and maybe a couple. Now it'll be third and maybe seven. So we're going to see a replay of this and. Third and seven. It just, I thought it was on one. You said it was on one. No, I said it was on two. You said it was on one. Come on, defense. Now that they've get it, their signal squared up, Helcher throws over the middle. That's incomplete. In and out of the hands of Evan Garvey, who wasn't quite expecting that one. Garvey looked completely unprepared for that pass. It actually hit him in the right arm. It was a little bit behind him. Helcher's under a lot of pressure here. Gonzalez almost got to him. I think maybe that pass might have also been batted down by Royale Richards. Now Westfield State will send out their punting unit. Another three and out for the Owls. They've yet to get a first down on their own. A lot of car manufacturers on that board. Crawford set deep for the Falcons. All right, right BMW, Ford on three. This one a little better punt. It'll be picked up on the bounce by Malik Crawford, and he'll run it to midfield. There was also a penalty on the play. Flag down. Flags back down around the 10-yard line. Running into the kicker. Five-yard foul, still fourth down. So running into the kicker called against Fitchburg State as opposed to roughing. So it'll be a five-yard penalty and a replay of fourth down rather than a personal foul that gives fouls the Owls the another. Fouls decline. Well, never mind. They declined the penalty. We'll take a look at it again here. See Cleveland gets the kick away. And then right there, he is, in fact, run into. Actually, he was hit up around the head. I think uh, Falcons might be a little bit fortunate that that wasn't called roughing. I'm going to guess it's like we couldn't see it because one of the refs was standing in the shot, but I believe Jackson was airborne at the time of the kick. One of those cases where he couldn't control his momentum. I see. Is probably why they only called running into the kicker. Ultimately, Westfield was happy enough with how that punt went off that they decided, yeah, we'll just take that. Fitchburg State is slowly but surely winning the battle of field position. They take over first and 10 at their own 47 now. Which is about where they would have been if they had gotten exactly what they needed on fourth down their last drive. So basically picking up from where they left off. On first down, Lawn running to the left side, found a bit of room, gets from the Falcon 47 to the Owl 47. That's a gain of six. Gain of about six on the play. Mazzotta had the hit for Westfield. Pretty nice hole created there by the left side Second of the offensive four. line for the Falcons. We tick under 60 seconds to go in this first quarter, still scoreless. Lawton remains in the backfield, couple receivers to the near side for the Falcons. It'll be a handoff to Lawton, bursting up the middle. He's got a lot of space to work with. Taken down at the 35-yard line, a gain of 12, and another first down. It's amazing what happens when you face an 0-17. The Falcons running offense looking better today than it has for most of this season. Great blocking by the offensive line. Steve Lawton is finding the holes as they open up. I think that's the biggest run of the day for Fitchburg State, sets them up at the Owl 35. So first and 10, 35 yards from goal. They'll give it to Lawton again. Noah Juar nearly wrapped him up, but ultimately a five-yard gain for Lawton. As, as I expected at the end of one quarter of play, there will be no score. Cool Give us a chance to thank Field once news. again our football underwriters who help bring this and every telecast here on FATV to you. They include Fitchburg State University located at 160 quarter, Pearl Street here in Fitchburg. North End Subaru at 757 Chase Road in Lunenburg. 
the Neshoba Valley Medical Center, 200 Groton Road in Ayr, Red Apple Farm, 455 Highland Ave in Phillipston, North End Subaru, I just did North End Subaru, IC Credit Union, 300 Bemis Road in Fitchburg, Romano's Market, 138 Harvard Street, also in Fitchburg, and of course, Grand Rental Station, 88 Massachusetts Ave in Lunenburg. It's fine, I've only done this read 20 times this season. I'll get it down. Practice makes perfect after all. Now, Dan. Yes. I am going to do a benevolent, generous thing. All right. Do you want to call play-by-play -play for the rest of this drive? Yes, I do. Okay. It's been how long since you got to call a Falcon touchdown? I believe this is now going to be, of games that I've broadcasted, this will be, that would be 10 consecutive quarters in which I didn't get a home team touchdown. It has been a brutal streak for me. <laughs> Well, let's hope it ends soon. So thank you very much, John. As we get the first play of this second quarter, two receivers to the right for the Falcons, one to the left. And Bubba Lynch in the backfield. Quick throw, left side complete to Josh Nelson. Nelson takes it at the 20-yard line and goes out of bounds there. Assignment pass complete. Joshua Nelson. That'll be good enough for a first down. Of about eight on the Just play. a quick Those hitter on the hitch to the down. near side. It's all about getting the ball to Nelson in open space and letting him do something with it. He's mostly able Cowboys to avoid Jack Buckley, but Buckley 21. does guide him out of bounds. Stops that from being a big game. So 21 yards from goal, they'll spot him. And the handoff goes to Bubba Lynch, going to the left side, breaks out of a tackle, but there's two and four Owls Bubba ultimately Lynch, wrapping him up. It's half the Owl eight defense getting involved there to stop Bubba Lynch as he gets a gain of three yards. One thing we've been cognizant of as Lynch transitions from a linebacker into a running back is how much of the playbook he's aware of. He's had a few weeks of practice now. This time they bust out the counter run running to the left. Lynch does a pretty good job picking up three, four yards. It'll be second down and a long six. Bubba Lynch has averaged about four and a half yards per carry as a running back this season. And it's play action, roll out right side, throw is complete to Rittenauer, and Jake Cassidy lowers the boom there. As Rittenauer goes toppling there at the 16 yard line. Rittenauer who had come in motion goes back out to the right. Jake Cassidy says this tight end empty and just yeets him over his head. The converted quarterback, Jake Cassidy, in the secondary, making the tackle there. 15 tackles for Cassidy in his first two weeks in the secondary. Third and four for the Falcons, or five. They need to get to the 11. It'll go to Lynch. Lynch trying to bounce off a tackle there, not Bowling. able to do so. Ultimately, about three owls wrapping him up. Gain of about two on the play. A gain of two, but it's going to bring up third down. It's going to bring up fourth Mazzano down again. Third and five, especially with an Fourth offense like the Falcons, you would think that's a passing down, but I think Fitchburg State knew going in that they were going to go for it on fourth. Tried to catch the Owls napping a bit. They were unable to do so. So it'll be fourth and three. Falcon offense still on the field. They'll go three receivers. Lawton is the lone setback. We're now moving motion to the left side. Is there a jump there? There are flags on the field. There's a throw to the left side corner. Out of bounds was Mizzy Jillo Aquendo. There's a flag down. Flags were thrown at the snap. I think they caught the Owls jumping this time. Encroachment on the defense, number 46. A five yard penalty, and now the Falcons get a first down by penalty. Take a look again right at the top of your screen there. Saw that once earlier. This time, David White gets called for it. Fitchburg State had the free play, decided to take a shot to the end zone. Couldn't get the completion, but they do get first and goal Falcons as a result of the penalty. Just inside the 10. There go Haskins and Jill Oquendo to the right side, Nelson to the left. We're now in motion to the right. Lawton gets the carry and gets wrapped up Multiple in the backfield. Rashawn settles, settles that play. Short loss on the play. Settles is going to come unblocked from the right side of the formation. You could see that play developing perfectly on the replay. Great work by our FATV camera crew. Settles the freshman from Lowell. 
Was able to bring him down in the backfield. It's a loss of three. It'll be second and goal from the 11. Second time this year, I mean sixth time this year, that Settles gets a tackle for a loss. We're now to the right this time. Play action, roll to the left. Going to look for Nelson. To the end zone! Touchdown, Falcons! Josh Nelson pulls it in, and the Falcons strike first here on homecoming. It's a beautifully thrown ball by Fitzsimons. You always get a little wary with the right-handed quarterback rolling out to his left, but he delivered that one where only Josh Nelson could catch it, and catch it Nelson did. To chill for the extra point. It is good. 11.36 to go, second quarter, Fitchburg State 7, Westfield State nil. Was it worth it? Absolutely. Ten quarters, was it worth it? <laughs> it's been long enough, but now the Falcons, they get the touchdown strike. Third touchdown of the year for Josh Nelson, sixth touchdown through the air for Connor Fitzsimons. While we have a second, folks, we want to mention our upcoming telecast schedule here on FATV. Our next game will be next Friday, the night after Halloween. The Red Raiders hosting Westboro High School at Fitchburg at Crocker Field. Then there's a potential Red Raider playoff game on Friday the 8th. You know, I'm not saying there will be, but I'm also saying don't make plans. We'll be back here the next day, Saturday, November 9th for Senior Day. And of course, Thanksgiving. That's a thing. Kickoff, kickoff is taken by one of the up men for the Rams. I believe that was actually David White on the return. It might have been Cameron Denny. Might have Danny? also been Cameron Denny. Yeah. It was somebody wearing a high number who didn't run fast. Al's offense, first and 10. And whose number ended with a six. There we go. Maybe. Westfield State will take it first and 10 at their own 46. Andrew Pelcher, the senior from Holyoke. Will come back out. His running back is still Isandro Colon, the freshman. First and 10 Owls at their own 46. Four receivers. Colon is the tailback, and he gets the carry. Straight up the middle. There is a big hole in front of him. Lisandro Colon deep into Falcon territory. Finally brought down at the 24 yard line after about a 30 yard run. Almost doubles what his long run of the year was, which was just 14 yards. And Cologne just shaking off tackles. Ultimately, Royal Richards and Malik Crawford had to wrap him up there. Spread him out wide, run it straight up the middle. It's a well-designed play, and it worked for the Owls there. Now, same formation, same play call. As Cologne goes straight up the middle. This time, he's wrapped up at the line of scrimmage. I think it was Caleb Gonsalves. It was, in fact. And we have an injured Owl down on the field. Gonsalves tripped him up. Official timeout. Looks like that's Gabriel Velez. One of the offensive linemen for the Owls. It's a gain of about three. Gabriel Velez, big number 55. It's a freshman from Norwich, Connecticut. Graduate of the Norwich We're gonna Norwich take a look Academy. at this one again, folks. Watch the middle of your screen, upper right side. I think it might be an injury to his ankle. Again, Velez is a freshman. Comes to us out of Norwich, Connecticut. Graduate of the Norwich, Acad Norwich Free Academy. Excuse me. We do want to thank while we have some time to fill here, we want to thank our crew. Our director today is John Dextrace, Travis Falk, as always, doing Travis Falk type things as our technical supervisor. Jared Roberts is handling replays for us today. Jared does a great job. And our camera operators, we got a full crew today. Nicole Gaffney, Matt Murdoka, Josh Goggin, Antonio Garcia, Matt Macris, and Kevin Newey. Thanks to them. 
As we can see on the replay, what happened is Gonsalves' leg as he was trying to take down Cologne ended up striking Velez in the back of his right leg. And that was obviously not something that Velez's body was expecting in terms of contact there. Thus leading to the injury. Velez being and helped off the to the sideline. We'll keep an eye on him. But back to football here, it will be second down and seven. Pelcher from the shotgun, play fake, pumps, throws to the end zone to the right, wide open, but overthrown. He was trying to find Kevin Faunen. Faunen had all the space in the world behind him, but he also had plenty of space in front of him, and that's where Pelcher delivered the ball. Faunen's only catch last week was a 34-yard touchdown strike. Trying to hit that home run pass again, but that time just a little too far. They had it drawn up beautifully. The DBs bit. Faunen had plenty of space, but Pelcher couldn't deliver the pass accurately. So now it's third and seven. Howells need the 18. Cologne will keep it himself going to the left side. He is hit low, but he's able to pick up the first down. Spot him out of bounds right at the 15-yard line. Gain of about... On the Big first down as Sets Cologne found a lot of space on the left side. Fifteen. Whether they were expecting a pass or what have you, there just wasn't any coverage out on the left flank. Morikita made the tackle for Fitchburg State. Now first and 10 Owls at the Falcon 15 as we approach 10 minutes to play in the first half. Cologne running to the right, hops over a man, runs into a flock of Falcons at about the 10 yard line, and he will be brought down there. But a lot of players Dino on the left on that six. one. And yet Cologne lined up going right to the right straight away, committed to it, and found a good chunk of space out there. Second credit to Kiambu Jones with the tackle for Fitchburg State. It's a gain of six. It'll be second down and four. Westfield still from the shotgun. They've got trips receivers to the far side left. And Lissandro Cologne gets the carry on the sweep to the right. This time he is hit at the line of scrimmage and gets nothing. Kiambu Jones not brought him down. Falcons came out of that with the ball, but the officials are gonna say Cologne was down before it. We'll take a look at the end of the play here. I think that's pretty clear. He's down well before the ball comes loose. He's also down well before the hand grabs his face mask, so the Falcons got lucky. No game there, it'll now be third down and four. Cologne heads to the sideline. Shane Clark checks back in. Pelcher wants to throw left. Nothing there. Looks over the middle. Nothing there. Now under pressure. Now surrounded. Now sacked. Pelcher taken down at the line of scrimmage. Loss of about a yard. It'll bring up fourth down. Caleb Gonsalves a little slow to get up, but looks to be okay. This is just Turner great coverage Gonzalez. by the Falcon secondary, Dan. Forcing Pelcher, Pelcher to have to eventually run with it. Pelcher on the season, 13 carries for minus eight yards, so with only a long of five. Running with it is not his forte. Right at the end of the play there, you see Kiambu Jones just kind of jump on the pile and hope that the momentum will knock the quarterback down. Now fourth down, Pelcher throws to the left. It's high and it is incomplete. He was trying to find Cam Gallagher, but he found only field turf. The Falcon defense bends but does not break. Take a look at this incomplete pass again. Tried to find Gallagher, but too much oof in that one, and Gallagher is only five feet, eight inches tall. Trying to climb the ladder, but he had to climb a little higher than that. And the Falcons get a big fourth down stop. Now with more than half of this second quarter still to play, Fitchburg State is pinned fairly deep. They're gonna have it first and 10 just inside their own 10 yard line. Steve Lawton is still the main tailback. Frank Sims, the fourth, goes in motion. Hands off to Lawton, going to the left. Big hole created by the offensive line. Lawton, the ball Lawton plunges forward through it for five. a gain of about six. A good run on first down for Jake the Falcons. The and I believe this is the first time since the Castleton game, back in week two, that the Falcons are actually holding the lead. Second well, four. you gotta start somewhere, right? Absolutely. The Castleton game was the last game the Falcons won. It was. And the way I'm thinking is just, it's a bit different to see them now playing offense with a lead. 
Sims in motion again. Fumble on the handoff. Lawton couldn't handle it. The Double Owls the say they have it. And the officials agree. Westfield a huge swing in momentum. Westfield State takes over. Justin Smith had we'll take a look at this one again. Just couldn't get the handoff right. And you see there the ball just bounces right into the pile. Falls pretty much into the hands of Justin Smith. A huge break for the Owls. For Fitchburg, a huge blunder. Westfield State gifted a golden opportunity to tie this game up. First and 10 at the Fitchburg 15. They go four wide receivers. Sorry, Dan. It's all right. Handoff goes to Lisandro Colon straight up the middle. He will go in untouched. One play, 15 touchdown yards, touchdown Westfield. Third fumble of the season for Stephen Lawton. Third Lawton fumble lost, and it is a costly right fumble. And Westfield immediately makes the Falcons pay. Lissandro Colon, he's been the hot hand in the backfield for the Owls, and he finds a touchdown. Now, Ethan, is that Ethan Hallett, it looks like? 98. 98, excuse me. Corey Pooler will kick the extra point. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up and off the upright. No good. So the Falcons give Westfield State a golden opportunity to tie the game. And Westfield State says, eh, we'll only take uh, some of it. You can still have the lead. We just want a few points. It's only the second time this year Corey Pooler in 19 tries has missed an extra point. And that one, that was the type of extra point kick that it was going to be good from 30, 35 yards. But he strikes the left upright. A huge break for the Falcons. And Extra quarter, points quarter, looming in large 32. in this one. Lene to Chill made State hers. University Corey 14. Pooler could not make his. And that is the difference. Fitchburg State's offense will get the ball back. Still with the lead. Perhaps with a, a reassuring lesson about ball control fans, fresh in their exciting. minds. Would not be surprised if Bubba Lynch is in the backfield to start this next drive. It, uh, it wouldn't be shocking. Maybe a bit of a JC Santiago experience. Could be as well. In the quarterback challenge, we're going to see Happy to Tag me go up against Tyler Warlock. Cam Gallagher, who we've already seen try to pull down some catches for the Owls, is their kicker. Averages 56 yards a kickoff. The junior from Uxbridge, he's pretty good at it. This is a low bouncing kick. Picked up after a deflection at the 30-yard line. This is Stephen Lawton with the return. And he gets out to about the Falcon 39. Give Lawton nine yards on the return. I think that was Lawton. It was Lawton. It went over Jared Nelson there. And Lawton in as an up man, able to take advantage, try to make up for his mistake, got a few yards back. And actually, Dan, Stephen Lawton is coming out. He will be the tailback. It's like a couple of times I've seen the Falcons fumble in in the backfield and then immediately go to another running back. But this time they're going to trust Lawton. Frank Sims, the fourth, goes in motion. Handoff goes to Lawton, running to his right. Second effort is huge. There's a swarm of football players. I assume a football is in there somewhere. What the heck happened? 11 yards as this is basically how a rugby mall works in rugby, is you've got one player with the ball in the middle and then both teams pushing on either side to try to push <laughs> the player with the football forward, backwards, what have you. And in that case, the Falcons' strength was superior. Somewhere in that mass of humanity was Steve Lawton carrying a football and he gains 11 yards and the Falcons have it now at midfield. Lawton's just under 100 yards on the day. That's also probably the big reason why he stays in the contest. He has been solid in the backfield today. Gets the carry here on first down, plunges across the 45. Mark him down at the Owl 44-yard line. As I take another big step to my right and nearly strangle my broadcast partner with my cable. <laughs> But a good run there from Lawton again. Back-to-back -back solid runs. Again, he's approaching 100 yards. No Falcon has broken 100 this year. That's how much the Falcons' run game has struggled. In fact, they've been averaging 70 yards a game. They're already well over that. And we are just under six minutes to play here in the second quarter. Now second down and three. 
Falcons from the pistol. Handoff goes to the left. This is J.C. Santiago. Turns the corner, cuts up field, and he's dragged down as he crosses the 40-yard line. Elijah Ellis can't stop the first down, but saved what might have been a very big run for Santiago. They give Lawton a breather, go to J.C. Santiago. From the Westfield 39. Able to see there wasn't a whole lot of space to go into that mass of humanity there. So he just cuts to the left. a great shot. You basically get to see his thought process in action. Falcons play clock is running down here and they're not even close to ready to run a play here. I think he, Will Jamison heads to the sideline. I think he wanted an injury stoppage and the officials will give it to him. They're gonna reset the play clock. So Jamison heads to the sideline. Kevin Ritz will head in. Not sure quite what was up there, but Jamison was trying to make it clear he didn't feel he was fit to run a play there. I think that's what it was. Jamison wanted to come off and didn't hear a whistle for a stoppage, but the officials eventually gave it to him. Play clock running out again here. Falcons hurry to the line. They will hand off to Santiago. Spins out of one tackle, hits a whole bunch of owls. Whistles blow, and then the ball comes loose. Santiago, the ball so I don't think that strip is going to count. Whistles blew before the ball, ball came out. Possibly the ball field. came out because the whistles blew. Second and 11. That time there's just nowhere for him to go. And right about there, the whistles are blowing. And then you can see the ball is stripped free of Santiago. That was Jake Mullins who pulled it loose. But again, well after the whistles had blown. It's a loss of a yard for JC. It'll be second down and 11. Santiago remains the tailback. Jill Oquendo, Nelson, and Haskins are the receivers. Drew Ridenauer, the tight end in motion. Fitzsimons, no drop, just throws to the right. That is caught Joe Haskins with the reception. Gets to about the 36 yard line. It's a gain of five, and it'll set up third down and seven. Just a quick throw to the right side. Haskins, he was there. There was nobody quite on him. Ultimately wrapped up there by Elijah Ellis. This Westfield defense, Dan, has been very aggressive jumping those short routes. I think eventually the Falcons may want to try having Fitzsimons go with a pump fake and then try to hit something deep. Falcons haven't had much for deep passes today, just the touchdown, really. And off straight up the middle on third and seven does absolutely Santiago. nothing. A couple different no owls in there. Rashawn Settles as well as George Cole. Settles had the initial contact for this Westfield. This is Settles all by himself. He once again comes unblocked from the right side of the Falcon offensive line. Now Fitchburg State will have to kick it away. And I believe Westfield will take their Time second out timeout. State. Indeed they will with 314 high on the clock in a second. 7-6 Falcons. $500 given away today to one Fitchburg State So team. in addition to the three minutes 14, there's also point zero zero one five nine two six three eight. Featuring Happiness Agby seven. and Tyler Warla. That's as far as I can go. Here at Elliott Field. I've never actually time. tried to memorize the numbers of Pi. Looking at the away. passing numbers in this game, Fitzsimons, 5 for 8 for just $500. 26 yards. He does have the touchdown. Uh, it's better than Andrew Pelcher. I believe I'm seeing a big old zero in that completions column. Is yep. that right? For six attempts. Yep. Rough game for Pelcher opening on, but Lissandro Colon has been a revelation in the backfield for the Owls. Eight carries for 68 yards along the 27, and he's got the touchdown for the blue and white. So now Fitchburg State kind of in that maroon zone. They're at the 36 yard line, no real point in punting. Plus Westfield State's offense can't exactly move the ball. Why not go for it? They will go indeed, Thir fourth and seven. Fitzsimons under pressure, throws to his right, deflected and incomplete. incomplete. Knocked down there by Elijah Third Ellis. Might've been Cassidy actually. As they were trying to find Jill Aquendo on the right side. No, oh, you're right, Dan. That was, in fact, Jake Cassidy. The QB turned CB. First pass breakup of the season for the senior from Lynn. And it's a big play for the Owls. Forces the turnover on downs. So they'll take over first and 10 at their Owls own 36. They've got three minutes and change along with one timeout. 
Cologne the carry on first down, goes straight Cologne up the, the middle, carrier. gains two or three. Gain of about A lot of trust in the freshman from Holyoke and Lissandro three. Cologne. It's one of those examples where Second local recruiting seven. will go a long way. Second down and seven, back to live action here. Pelcher throws to the left, pass is low, and it is incomplete. Pelcher's pass falls incomplete. He was trying to Mike hit Miller. Mike Miller. The intended receiver, third and seven. That was number 15, so it was Miller. Miller's a sophomore coming to us from Trumbull, Connecticut. I have no catches this season for him. Interesting target for the Owls. Now on third and seven, Pelcher still wants his first completion of the day. This is incomplete. Pelcher Once again, Westfield State had a Number big play to Kevin Fawnen that Pelcher couldn't complete. Pelcher has plenty of time to throw. Fawnen has three steps on his defender, but the ball is three steps ahead of him. Cleveland on to punt it away for Westfield. And for Pelcher coming in 53.3% accuracy which has dropped well under 50% with all these incompletions. Cody Cleveland on to kick it away for Westfield State. Mike Miami set back deep to return for the Falcons. Fair catch made at the 20 yard line. Fair catch by Malik Crawford. 2.27 to go here in the second quarter, and the Falcons get the ball back. Falcons first and 10 from their own I will 20. say, Dan, we've seen a couple of times this season, most notably that 12-10 victory over Castleton. Connor Fitzsimons can run a pretty solid two-minute drill. So with Fitchburg State having 2.27 and a timeout in hand, I wouldn't be surprised to see them try to put more points on the board here. I agree, and Lawton already 20 carries in this contest. Quick pass to the right, to the right rather, is complete. It's Josh Simon's Nelson, the complete. catch. Mark him down at about the 28. Joshua it's a gain Nelson of eight. Able to bring that one in. Gain of almost eight on the one play. of the things I'm noticing here, a lot of short passes from Fitzsimons. He's had a lot of trouble looking downfield. Ultimately, his long pass of the day, just 10 yards. Second down pass is into double coverage Simon's and incomplete. incomplete. Closest well man to it was Elijah Ellis. Secondary. Connor Fitzsimons is very lucky that that ball didn't go all the way back for a touchdown. He's already thrown three pick sixes on the season, including one last week. Brings up a third and two. And going back to the Falcons' struggles in getting long passes downfield, fourth fewest yards per completion in D3. They average just under nine yards a catch. They need just two here on third down. Fitzsimons will hand off to Lawton, going to his left, cuts it upfield. He's got the first down, not much more than that, but that's all he needs in the moment. Stop the clock, move the chains. 158 to play. First down, Falcons at their own 33. One thing I like about Steve Lawton is he's able to keep his momentum going. He's able to break a couple of tackles occasionally. In this case, not so much breaking tackles, but he keeps his momentum moving forward. He's able to get a couple extra yards. Fitzsimons under pressure, and he's going to be brought down deep in the backfield. This is a loss of about eight or Dave nine White. yards. David White, the, the sack. It's his first sack of the season, surprisingly, for the junior from Walpole. Westfield State has had a lot of success attacking from the right side of the Falcon offensive line. Their Lost left end, to their left the outside play. linebackers have been doing a really good job getting into the backfield. This time, White is able to bring down Fitzsimons, call it a loss of 14 yards, unofficially second down and 24. Lawton the carry on second down, gets a few, but not carries. much more than that. Maybe a gain of four for him. And we are under a minute to play here, and a timeout kills the clock with 59 seconds to go. I think West, Westfield. Westfield calls the timeout because otherwise the Falcons could more or less run the clock down. That is Westfield's third and final. Westfield would, if they can get a stop on third down, they would be able to get the ball back depending on if the Falcons run or pass here. Well. They'll have less than a minute to work with, obviously, but if the Falcons don't get a first down, they will almost certainly, they will get the ball back. I would think, and you know me, I'm a gambler at heart, and I always say to be aggressive. 
I think the play call here is to just hand the ball off. Because you're, you're going to run off mm, three or four seconds with the run, and then you're going to have a full play clock, and then you'll have to kick it away, and maybe Westfield will get a playoff? Maybe? With about 10 seconds left? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think you've got to run it here. I don't think it's worth taking the chance of throwing 30, and then giving, getting an incompletion and then giving them the ball with 45 seconds to work with. Third down, 15 to go. And it is, in fact, a handoff to Lawton going to the right. Nothing doing there, but the much more important thing, he hangs on to the football. And you can see the difference at the top of your screen. There's about a 12-second gap between the game clock and the play clock. So I would think Fitchburg State will take as much of this as they possibly can, maybe snap the ball with 13 seconds left, maybe just take a delay a game. Jim McGuire's already standing next to one of the side judges. So he's going to take his time out when there is one second on the play clock. Almost certainly. It's about five yards out on the field. There's no way they're running play here. <laughs> Literally impossible. And there is the timeout. One second on the play clock, 13 on the game. Fitchburg State will have to kick it away. And then in all likelihood, Westfield will get one play. Assuming the Falcons do kick it, they could just try something silly. I mean, it would be very silly, but they could. I mean, if there was like five or six seconds left, running around and dancing in the vicinity of the end zone, but not actually going into the end zone, one of those silly things to kill the clock yeah. would be a good idea. But not, not with 13. 13's a bit much. It's a bit much. They'd have to be very confident in a lot of holding. Need to have like Clarence Beef Tank in the backfield <laughs> to be able to run around 13 seconds. Or Tecmo Bowl, Bo Jackson. That's a reference I think more people will get. Joe Haskins kicks it away. Bounces Haskins out of bounds nice at the 33. And with six seconds left, six seconds Westfield State took timeouts Westfield to get State themselves into this situation. 32. What are they going to do with it? If they need, I'm going to be annoyed because they've wasted all of our time oh, for no good reason. 2019. Playing this little made a game here, but we've seen Pelcher try to hit those home run passes. The I'm Falcon. sorry, did you just say made a game? I'm stopping the broadcast. Okay. Made a game? Like when something is, is self-referential or the game within the game, you say that's made a? I think so. Is that right? I've never heard that pronounced that way. We should talk about football now. One play, Pelcher tosses it to the right side. It's his first completion of the day. Try to ladder up, the ball comes loose. Picked up by Fitchburg. Now they're gonna try to make something out of nothing. Malik Crawford has it. The officials are desperately trying to kill the play. Crawford comes out of bounds. There was a player hurt in the backfield. That's, I think, why they killed the play there. There is a Falcon player down. I believe that's Dom Vassumption. It is indeed. You see him there. So that was a bit of a hijinx as we head to the locker rooms. Everything got a bit silly is what happened there. And at the end of the day, it was sort of a player safety whistle there. And at the end of the first half, Fitchburg State has the lead seven to six. Players are heading to the locker rooms and we will take the break with them. We'll get you an update on Dom Vassumption if we can. Folks, stick around for the second half. Falcons might just have a chance to win this one. Maybe, hopefully, please. Back here at Elliott Field on FATV, John Gugarty joined by Dan Bolak. Here are some first half highlights for you. This was the one touchdown scored by the Falcons. Connor Fitzsimons to Josh Nelson earlier in the game. Of course, there was also this fumble by Steve Lawton, <laughs> gave Westfield State a big opportunity, and they capitalized on it like so. Lissandra Colon, one play, 15 yards, and a touchdown. The difference being, though, the extra point hits the left upright, and so 7-6 Fitchburg in front as we start this second half. Second half kickoff by Joe Haskins is away, taken in at about the 24-yard line and returned up to about the 40. Falcons are saying they have the ball. No signal yet from the officials. 
They now say that Westfield State recovered. So it may have come loose at the end of the play. Todd Holloway Jr. had the kickoff return. Dan, do you want to hear an interesting story? Sure. Had the tackle. So during the halftime break, I went to the men's room. Mm -hmm. And as I was coming back, I discovered some interesting feature about Elliott Field. Yes. There is a dip on the path right in front of the Falcons locker room. Okay. And if you take that dip in just a certain way, in just a certain amount of hurry, you wind up falling on your fat backside and bleeding in the press box. Oh boy. It's fun. Leandro, Lisandro Cologne with the Lissandro carry Cologne on first down carrier. for Westfield State. He first gets across the 45 into Falcon territory 16. and has a first down. But that is blood, right? I'm not hallucinating that. Uh, a little bit, yes. A little bit, yeah, that's fine. First and 10 Westfield from the Fitchburg 43. But you are all right. Oh, I'm fine. Is there a first aid kit in the truck, by the way? Does that first aid kit have, like, hydrogen peroxide? Let's go, Falcons! My defense! Let's go, Steve! I can take over the, the, if you need it. I, I think I'll be fine. I'm probable to return. How about that? Shane Clark First down carry. carry goes straight up the no middle. Game. Nothing doing there. And uh, John Gugerty will check out to the sidelines and once again is Number probable Jones, to return. Combined for the Fitchburg Shane Kate. Clark Second had the 10. carry there. Big contact there. Shane Clark running into Kiambu Jones. Caleb Gonsalves also there. Clark has not found a lot of success on the ground today. Just his third carry of the day. They've gone with Lissandra Colon and they've done very well with it. On second and 10, Clark again onto the left side. Shakes past a tackler and he'll go out of bounds just short of the 25 yard line. Shane Clark with a big game. Big run of the day for Shane Clark and another first down for the Owls. See Pelcher holding onto the ball field. for a while before finally letting Clark run with it. And he found a lot of space to work with. Royale Richards pulls him out of bounds. First and 10 the Fitchburg 27. 27 yards from goal. Howells looking to score on their opening drive of the second half, trailing seven to six. And this time, Pelcher with the play action. They bit hard on Pelcher it, and Pelcher able barrier. to get some yards. I know I bit on it as well. On See, Clark had it, and then at the last moment, Pelcher pulls it out. Able to get a couple of yards, 10 on 10 action there. Kiambu Jones gets the tackle and prevents Pelcher from get it, make, doing any more damage second there. Along five. five yards gained on first down, second and five it'll be. A couple receivers out to the left and then it's a handoff there, different running back this time. Christopher Belsito gets his first run of the day. Cito, the, ball carrier. the senior first from Webster. And he gets the first down on that one. Let's look at it again. A run up the middle and a lot of space there. Rich Austin wraps him up. Another Falcon coming over the top at the end. 13 yards from goal. Cologne returns to the backfield. Two receivers to the left for the Owls. It's gonna be Cologne. He's got a lot of space going towards the end zone. Dives over the goal line, touchdown Owls. Second touchdown of the day for Lissandro Colon. The freshman of, from Holyoke has given the Owls their first lead of the game. That nice stutter step at the very end there. And able to dive across the goal line for the touchdown. 12-7 Owls. Corey Pooler to attempt the extra point. Missed the first one. Had a lot of strength, but he struck the left upright. Try it again this time. He doesn't need that much oomph on it. And he's able to put it straight through. Trades the power for accuracy and nails the extra point. 12-15 to go, third quarter. It's Westfield State with their first lead of the day. They lead 13 to seven. And Lisandro Colon now over 100 yards on the day. 11 carries for 102 yards. Coming into today, he only had eight carries for 36 yards but they trust the freshman to do the work in the backfield today. And he has found some holes. He's exploited the Falcon defense, and now he's given his squad a lead. We will see what the Falcons can do on their first drive of the second half. Steven Lawton has 23 carries for 108 yards today. 
He's been leading the backfield for the green and gold. Cam Gallagher to kick off. As we said, averaged 56 yards a kick Gallagher off this season. He's actually got three touchbacks. You can see a whole lot of those at the Division Three level. Boots it downfield. It'll be hauled in there by the Falcons. As Crawford gets wrapped up at the 30-yard line. Return. Did I miss anything fun? Uh, I mean, I know I know Westfield scored, but did anything actually fun? Happen? Not from a Falcon perspective. Well, dang. So Malik Crawford had the run back to the 30-yard line. You all right? I'm fine. All right. Third quarter is yours again. It's not like I sprained my vocal cords or anything. Connor Fitzsimons leads the Falcon offense back out onto the field. They'll take over first and 10 at their own 30. Offense, take it over the line. Uh, formation behind Fitzsimons. Sims is the fullback, Lawton the tailback. And Lawton gets the carry running to the right. Good run there. It's across the 35, Game maybe to about the 37-yard line. We call that a gain of seven. Lon's been doing well at finding space. Feels like he just goes downfield like a cannonball. Second and three. And and he does makes... he come in like a wrecking ball? <laughs> that is also a good reference. Thank you. Second down, three now for Fitchburg State. Lawton will get the carry again, this time to the left, and this time nothing doing. Now, Dan, did you hit the football underwriters while I was away? I did not. Then let's hit them now. They are IC Rashawn Credit Union Sells, on 300 Bemis Road in Fitchburg. We also have North End Subaru, 757 Chase Road, Lunenburg. Romano's Market, 138 Harvard Street, Fitchburg. Grand Rental Station, 88 Massachusetts Avenue in Lunenburg. Of course, there's the Neshoba Valley Medical Center, found on 200 Groton Road in Ayr. Red Apple Farm at 455 Highland Ave in Phillipston. And right here, Fitchburg State University, official headquarters 160 Pearl Street in Fitchburg. Third and three for the Falcons. They'll go pistol. Lawton behind Fitzsimons. Play fake. Quick pass to Nelson on the near sideline. He makes the catch. It's going to come down to the spot. I think they're going to give him the first down. Jack Buckley was all over him. See, Nelson made the catch at about the 41. He was spun backward from there, but they're going to give him forward progress to the 41. And that'll be a first down Fitchburg State. The sticks were, I think, just short of the 40, so I think no matter where they spotted him, unless they spotted him in a place where the ball never was, he was surely going to get the first down on that one. Riddenauer goes in motion, handoff Lawton running to the left. Dragged Long down after a couple. Want to give a special shout out to our scoreboard operator for getting rid of that absolutely Joseph enormous Zaza. wasp that had made its way into the, the press box. Tackle. With the Wait. woods and nature beyond the confines of Elliott Field, some of those nasty bugs may find their way into the press box from time to time. Now well, we've already had one injury stoppage in the press box. I don't think we want anybody going into anaphylactic shock. Second down and eight, Fritchburg State. Frank Sims, the tight end in motion. Steve Lawton, the tailback of the ball carrier. Two more. Gets out to about the 45. Not much more than that. It's a gain of just a couple. It'll be now third down and six for Fritchburg. They need to get just outside the midfield stripe to the Westfield 49. The Falcons have been trusting Lawton with the ball. Now I think 27 carries on the day. Third down might be seeing another short pass here. You don't want to be too predictable. Fitchburg's offense has fallen into that trap at times on the season. And we know the Falcons, they've gone forward on fourth down from about this field position at least once today. Now Sims in motion, just a second on the play clock. Play fake, Fitzsimons under pressure, floats it out to the right for Nelson. It was beyond his reach, Jake Cassidy providing good coverage for Westfield State. And it looks like this is just a bit too far, the punt unit on for Fitchburg State. And even if that was a little closer to Nelson, Jay Cassidy was right there, it would have been difficult for Nelson to gain the first down. And if the ball had been down at about midfield, maybe we'd 
we'd, so we would be seeing the Falcons go for it. But here, uh, Freddie's had better days, obviously. Joe Haskins on to kick it away for Fitchburg State. Barely does get this one off. High spiraling thing. Bounces out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. It's only about a 25-yard punt, Dan, maybe? Something like that. Yeah, the pressure there was enough for him to end up putting a lot of air under it. Wasn't able to get that line drive kick that he normally does for long yardage. Not quite what the Falcons were looking for. And Westfield with fairly solid field position, they'll give him the 30-yard line. About 25 yards on that punt. Andrew Helcher will come back out. Much more importantly, Lisandro Colon is beside him. Helcher keeps it himself. Plunges forward, gets just a few. Wonder if that was a designed QB keeper or maybe an option play. I think that's an option right there. They look like they've run that a couple of times, and Cologne has always taken it going out to the far side. That time, Pelcher kept it himself, got a few yards. Second down seven for the Owls. This time, it's Cologne straight up the middle, breaks through the line at first, and is finally wrapped up. We're going to give him the 37. Right. Give him a lot of forward progress that time. Let's have a look at the replay. Playing the Pittsburgh hit. I don't see that line in particular. I see the 36, but not the 37. Pretty much. But, you know, it's the beautiful, inexact science that is American football. Multi-billion dollar industry, key functions of which are determined by a guy 20 yards away from the ball guessing where it is. Third down and three for the Owls. They need to get right to the 40. This time it's a pitch to Clark on the near side. He gets across the 40. Picks up the first down. They give an extra yard on the spot. He ultimately gets the first down by two, so inconsequential more or less. Shane Clark listed as the starting running back, but has only seen a handful of carries today. But timing is everything. Lisandro Colon has been doing so well for Westfield State, they've been riding his hot hand. Now Clark remains the tailback. Four running backs for the Owls. Clark gets the carry. He breaks through. He's across midfield into Falcon territory, driven out of bounds, and then shoved to the ground. I think Clark might have wanted a flag. Didn't get one, but he has to console himself with a 20-yard run. Just found a lot of space to the right side. Joel Montero ultimately just has to run him out of bounds. And yes, there was the extra shove at the end. Wasn't a whole lot of force in that one, though. First and 10 after that run, now on the Fitchburg 39. QB keeper once again, Pelcher straight up the middle. Pelcher the ball carrier. Another good game, game for him. Five, Pelcher isn't really a terribly explosive runner, Dan, but he keeps it himself on this option play and he's able to get a good chunk of yardage. Second he's doing well thinking on the fly here with these handoffs. Second down and four. This time Clark straight up the middle. Got to about the 30. Splits the difference needed for the first down. We'll call it now third down and two. I think the Owls are very much in four down territory here. Just a run up the middle, a simple run this time for Clark. It's now over 50 yards on the day. Seven for 52. Third down to Westfield State. They've got four receivers as they have all day. Quick pass to the far side is complete. That'll be a first down, Westfield State. Cam Gallagher with the catch. He is spun down with authority by Joel Montero. Just a quick little flat route by Gallagher. Montero was playing off enough that Pelcher was able to deliver the ball. Gallagher got the first down out of it. Now from the Falcon 28, this is Cologne, the ball carrier. Not much doing for him. Might have gotten a yard. Tries the left side this time. Caleb Gonsalves had pretty good penetration. Officially no gain. It'll be second down and 10 as we approach the five minute mark here in this third quarter.
Pelcher, play fake, pumps, throws right, pass is caught. Brought down at the 10 yard line, but he does have a first down. Kevin Fawn in the catch. Fawn has had a couple of big plays go just out of his reach. This time, Pelcher with all day to throw, delivers a beautiful tight spiral there. Fawnen's able to make the catch. Gets just inside the 10, so it will be first and goal, Westfield State. Cologne in the backfield. He'll take the pitch running to his left. Tries to bounce it to the outside. He gets nothing. Malik Crawford all over him. One thing I've noticed is Westfield's been running. They've been going pretty up-tempo. I barely had time to get a word in edgewise. And not only that, during that one drive while you were attending to your injury, it just felt like every time I finished my point, up oh, time for the next play. <laughs> Second down goal for the Owls. They're at the Fitchburg 10-yard line. Play fake, Pelcher rolls to his right. He's gonna keep it himself. He's got a bit of his hole. It's across the five, but not to the goal line. I think he's down at about the two. I think Pelcher may have been thinking six on that run. It's about Turner six yards, but he junior. wanted six points there. Just the and hole closed up quickly enough. Goal. It was A.J. Cadell at the very end. Usually it's a defender delivering a hit. This time Pelcher just lowered his shoulder and plowed through. Now the Owls go with a nice bunch formation. Pelcher will keep it to himself, try to get through the middle. Absolutely nothing there. He is ultimately Pelcher driven backwards. Two different Falcons fall on him. And flag comes in very late here. Oh, if this is against Fitchburg State, they are gonna be shooting themselves in the foot so hard. After getting what would be a great stop on third down to force fourth down. But obviously stuff happening after the whistle, they're informing the referee. It's like the lines person. In Personal the foul, 33 on the defense. So a personal foul is indicated against Royale Richards. The penalty will be half the distance to the goal, but much more importantly, a first down for Westfield. I think we may be able to take a look at this one. If I'm... Unsportsmanlike. And a note is made that it was unsportsmanlike conduct. And ow, that hurt. 33 green, he's disqualified. Royale Richards has been ejected from this football game. We'll take a look at it again. Upper right side of your screen, Royale Richards number 33. Gets a shove there, may have delivered a shove. I think they're gonna say that he shoved a player while he was down. Meanwhile, back to live action, Westfield State's in the end zone. Touchdown, Andrew Pelcher. So this third quarter has gone poorly. We'll take a look at this one again. So they fake the handoff to Clark. Pelcher just keeps it himself, and he goes into the end zone for the touchdown. Now back to live action. The extra point is up, and it is through. So with 3.05 to play here in the third quarter, it has been all Westfield State since the halftime break. They come out with 14 unanswered points, Dan, and lead this one by a score of 20 to 7. It's a bit disappointing for the Falcons. They looked like they had a really good stop there, but then the unsportsmanlike conduct gives the Owls life. Not to say they probably, well, it's like, would they have been able to run it in on fourth down? Would they have gone for it? Would they have just gone to Pooler for a field goal? Who knows? But it's definitely points that the Owls have gotten that Fitchburg basically, they shot themselves in the foot and they've given the Owls more points than they probably deserved at the very end. Two possession game now, Westfield on top 20 to seven. I'm just watching Royale Richards here on the near sideline. He is beside himself. He's finally being talked to now. That's Connor Briggs talking to him. Briggs, one of the captains for the Falcons. Richards is gonna have to head to the locker room, I believe. If you're supposed to be 
out of sight and sound if you're disqualified. Willie Crawford takes the kick at about his own 15. He'll cut it upfield. He's got some breaks. He's across the 40-yard line and spun Thanks down the there. It's a good return for Malik Crawford. Yeah. Falcon offense will have good field position. He had a pretty good one to open up the game. The Falcons again with Malik Crawford. He only had, as we said, one kick return this season coming into today's game. Falcons first to 10 from their own 42. But he's done pretty well on these runbacks. Nice cut there. Got to the 40 and ultimately seems like he lost his balance trying to make another move. Gives Fitchburg State good field position. First and 10 at their own 42. You see there Bubba Lynch checking in as the tailback. Now Haskins comes in motion to the near side. Fitzsimons straight drop, set up the screen to Lynch. It's complete, he's got blockers in front of him. He's got a first down into Owl territory. And Bubba Lynch is brought down at the Westfield 46. Drew Rittenauer is holding his right shoulder, it looks like, as he got up there. You can see the just quick dump off pass and Lynch as the backfield option. There is a safety valve and able to burst downfield and gain about 15 yards. First and 10 Falcons at the Owl 45. Haskins comes in motion again. Handoff goes to Lynch, up the middle, good blocking by the line. Pretty good second effort as well. It's a gain of about seven for the junior from Roxbury. Gain of almost seven on the play. Falcons primarily going with Steven Lawn in the backfield today. Lynch struggled a little bit on his carries in the first half, ultimately only had three for two yards. Second and three. But he's starting to show why they've converted him from a linebacker to a running back. Second down and two now for Fitchburg State. They're at the 37. Rittenauer goes in motion. Lynch gets the carry going to the right. He's got the first down again. Three, four, five yards, stop the clock, move the chains. It's another Fitchburg first down for Bubba Lynch. Lynch keeping that momentum. A bit taller, a bit slender in his build. Able to spin out of tackles if need be in that case. Basically able to contort his body forwards. Six feet tall, 210 pounds. Able to get another first down for the green and gold. Now spotted at the Owl 34, Ridenauer once again in motion. And Lynch gets the counter running to the right. Runs into the line, tries to push forward. He's only got himself a couple yards. He's hoping for a bit of backup there from the line there to try to push him forward, but that time the Owl's a bit stronger. And combined for the Westfield hit, second and eight. Bubba will head to the sideline. Steve Lawton will check back in. We'll have one, maybe two more plays here in this third quarter. Fitchburg State trying to narrow their deficit, trailing this one 20 to seven. Falcons go with that pistol, three receivers and a tight end. Lawton is the tailback, play fake. Fitzsimons throws to the left, that pass is incomplete. Very nearly intercepted. Jack Buckley had field turf in front of him, but he couldn't bring the pass in. Connor Fitzsimons playing with fire all day today. Nearly got burned there. Trying to find Jillo Oquendo who hasn't had a completion today. And ultimately, Buckley reading that well. He was looking for his second pick of the season, nearly at it. Now third down and eight. Falcon send Rittenauer in motion once again, and they just hand it off to Lawton. It's one of their best plays in the playbook today. He's got six or seven yards, and it will at least be a manageable fourth down as we wrap up the third quarter of action here at Elliott Field. Westfield Combined State having Westfield broken themselves hit. out to a 20 to seven lead. I know I was thinking run on third down, feeling that Lawton could get a few yards like that. He does get the few yards, but ultimately just two more needed for a first down. The Falcons another fourth down they're facing. They're three of five today. When's the last time you saw a team have six shots on fourth down? It's uh, It's been a while. It's the kind of thing where 
with this Falcon offense that really doesn't concern itself too, too much with deep shots downfield. They much, they much prefer, you know, the four yard run, the four yard run, the three yard run, hey, that's a first down, that kind of thing. An offense like that will find itself in a fourth and two situation more than most, I think. Especially if you're averaging three yards a run, yeah, you'll end up with only a yard to gain on fourth. While we have a moment here, Dan, why don't we thank one more time our football underwriters who help bring this and every telecast to you at home here on FATV. Absolutely, John. I see Credit Union at 300 Bemis Road in Fitchburg, North End Subaru at 757 Chase Road in Lunenburg, Romano's Market 138 Harvard Street in Fitchburg, Grand Rental Station at 88 Mass Ave in Lunenburg, the Neshoba Valley Medical Center 200 Groton Road in Ayer, Red Apple Farm, 455 Highland Ave in Phillipston and Fitchburg State University at 160 Pearl Street right here in Fitchburg. It's almost like you've done that before. <laughs> couple Only a couple of times. <laughs> Fitchburg State will be facing a very important fourth down and two, and here to make the call is Dan Bullock. They have ridden now as a tight end. They got a jump. They're thrown up downfield. A lot of stuff Aren't happening down there. Down. I think the, owl, the owls clearly jumped, and also I think you can make a very strong case of pass interference on the floater. Number 90 on the defense, encroachment, five yard foul, first down. They call Angel Ramos for the offside. See Ramos there, bottom of your screen, he jumps across, he's across at the snap, so this is a free play, and then right there, Jack Buckley I mean, maybe they're going to say it's an uncatchable ball. But ultimately, with you can't complain too much with the free play in the first place. This is true. Falcons will happily take it. And a first and 10. Looking for a handoff. Lawton right side. Immediately Lawton wrapped carrier. up. Joseph Mazada getting there. And a flag comes in late. Seems like these two teams may be getting a little uh, familiarity breeds contempt. I think they may be getting some contemptuous feelings as we get more familiar with one another. Personal foul, 44 green, hands to the face. So they're gonna call Frank Sims the fourth for illegal use of hands to the face. That will back the Falcons up 15 yards. That's painful to the drive, considering how much trouble the Falcons have had getting large amounts of yardage, especially through the air today. Sims will head to the sidelines. Joe Haskins will check back in. It'll be second down and 22 after the penalty. Make things a little more challenging. Nelson lines up to the right. Haskins and Jill Oquendo to the left. We're now in a bit of motion. They give to Lawton. There's a lot of space on the left side. If he can get to the flank, he'll get some yards. He's also put the ball on the ground. I think the Falcons fell on it. Lawton the ball carrier. And they did. Keenum Will Jamison was Jamie on the spot. Fortunate there. It's actually the first fumble out of Lawton this season that hasn't been lost. Good for Jamison to jump on that one and beat the Owls to the ball. Second and long. Correction, third and long. Dan, so, it's only 20 to seven, right? I didn't miss something. I don't think I missed a touchdown. Third down. Throw tipped up in the air. This is intercepted. Picked off there by Elijah Harris. They had to go for something. And ultimately tipped up in the air, and Harris pulls it down. Second interception of the year for the junior from Derby, Connecticut. For a second, Dan, I thought we were just being prophetic. This ball, after it's tipped and intercepted, there's a moment here on this return where it looks like Elijah Harris is going to take it all the way back. He breaks out of Haskins' tackle there and is finally shouldered out of bounds. I believe that was Connor Fitzsimons, the quarterback who finally just ferried him away from the field of play. But now down by two scores, the Falcons commit another turnover. Westfield State has a chance to salt this one away. 
Under pressure, just a pressure throw. Cologne takes it on first down. Able to keep his legs moving. Looks like they're only gonna give him about two yards on this one. Gain of about two. Not too much doing there for Lisandro Cologne. Cologne's had an excellent day. Over 100 yards today. As we mentioned, he only had 36 yards coming into today. And for the freshman from Holyoke, something today he's definitely proud of. One receiver to the right, two to the left for the Owls here on second down. Cologne will take the hand off again. Shakes out of one, two tackles still on his feet. Took a lot to pull him down. Several Falcon tacklers, including Took Arnold a lot of Jr. effort to bring Gained him down. Three. He didn't gain too much. Five. You can see he's there fighting, fighting for yardage. Finally brought down three, four different Falcon tacklers in on there. The way that the bodies fell at the end, it looked almost like Cam Gallagher was the one who took him down. Just trying to wrap around him to push him forward, but ultimately ends up on top of him. Third and five it'll be. The Owls are five for nine on third down today. Again with two receivers to the left side. Cologne in the backfield, Pelcher looking to the right side for a throw. That one incomplete, but a penalty flag comes out from the umpire. I think there might have been a little bit of aggressive defending there the by Don The receiver downfield, 75. Never mind. They're going to say that Chris Saba, one of the offensive linemen for the Owls, was too far downfield. I thought they might say that right there that was pass interference, but I think it was just good coverage by Vassumption. I believe so as well. I didn't see any problem with that. Now the referee is uh, discussing something. Can't tell if that's with the side judge or with the Westfield sideline. Ineligible downfield, it's declined. So the penalty is declined and it will be fourth down. Don't know why you needed to talk to Westfield State to determine that, but okay. Well, if that's the worst thing that ever happens to Pete Kowalski at Elliott Field, oh wait, it definitely won't be. Uh, what happened the last time he was here, Dan? Yes, that is something that we'll bring up on the next whistle, but I can tell you this Westfield State team hungry for their first win of the season and I think it would be fitting if they got it here at Elliott Field for reasons we'll talk about after the punt. It's a tease. It's an expert tease. Cleveland will boot it away. Crawford's going to let it bounce, and it's going to be a great punt for Cody Cleveland. Falcons will be pinned around the 10-yard line. Now, to talk about what happened last year when Westfield came to Fitchburg State, they won that game, but in the third quarter, there was a play that spilled out to the sideline, and Pete Kowalski, the head coach of the Owls, was taken out. He broke his leg and all that, had to leave the contest. Yeah, and hearing the guys in the truck talk about it, and they were saying, it's like they saw the replay. We never played back because they saw it was, uh, it was bad. It was not good. But he's back now, up, moving around. Indeed. Glad to see Coach Kowalski you know, back at it. He missed the last three games of the year. He's looking for his first win since that injury. And on first down, look at the rejection there. Tried to hit that screen pass to Bubba Lynch again. This time, Justin Smith was ready for it. We'll take a look at this one again. Smith is going to come from the left side of the line. He's not able to get to Fitzsimons, but he does get his hands up, and he's able to swat the pass down. Smith is 6'4", 230, leaps up in the air and rejects it with his elbow. <laughs> Didn't really need the hang time there, but for good measure. Second down, Bubba Lynch, not much. Jadis Morrison able to make the tackle for the Owls, and it's going to bring up a third and nine. Hey, I know this one. You know how we often ask, you know, where the heck is such and such? Jadis Morrison is from Springfield, Mass. I'm going to go there after this game. Indeed. 
very close hey, to home for you. Trayvon Givens is actually from West Springfield. That's even closer. Can you get any closer than that? No, I live in West Springfield. So third down, Falcons need a hit there and they're not gonna get it. Nelson has it go through his hands and he gets decked after the ball goes through his hands for good measure. And I think he came up worse for wear on that. Take a look at this one again. The pass is high and it's too high for Nelson. Goes through his hands and then well after the play is essentially over, Jadis Morrison delivers the big hit. Now Nelson is going to be carried off to the sideline. That, uh, I realized the ball hadn't even hit the ground yet, but did you really have to hit him like that? Yeah, it was not a, wasn't the most sporting thing in the world. Still airborne as well. I didn't like that at all. It's gonna be handled by Gallagher. He'll take it no fair catch and bring it back inside the 30 yard line. Andrew Shore, the tackle for Fitchburg State. But Westfield, as you said, Dan, is inside the Falcon 30. They lead this one by two scores. Came into this one saying it was a very winnable game for Fitchburg. Westfield State winless on the season. But you have to know that the Owls looked at their schedule and they said, you know what? We might be on the road, but this Fitchburg State team isn't very good. We could probably beat them. Yep. You can see what happened to Nelson. It was actually Joseph Mazzotta who had the hit there. And may have also re resulted in Nelson landing awkwardly. Mm -hmm. Nelson was actually favoring his leg as he was taken off. Cologne on first down, trying to fight for yardage on the left hash down at the 25 yard line. Three yard gain on first down for the freshman. Honestly, Sandro Cologne has been very impressive. As you said, he's just a freshman, hasn't had much exposure in the Westfield offense to this point of the season. He's listed at six foot 182. He seems bigger than that. I know the very definition of bigger than expected one of the running backs we haven't seen in Jermaine Everett welcome, six feet tall, 255. That's also big. And Cologne, another run, found a hole. Keep on trucking inside the 15 yard line. Lissandro Cologne giving the Owls fans hope for the future. Obviously coming into this one 0-7, bit of a lost year for them. But if they can expect, you know, two or three more years of this guy out of the backfield. Definitely go a long way for this Owl squad. Again, looking for their first win of the season. As we tick under 10 minutes to go. Still 10 seconds on the play clock. Owls taking their time, running off as much as they can. And now Cologne again takes a glancing blow from Cadell. Spun backwards. I, I have to object, Dan. That was not a glancing blow. It was a heavy blow. It just happened to glance off because Lissandra Cologne is made out of adamantium or something. This is a big hit. Look at that. And he steadies himself and finally stumbles down. That was not a glancing blow. And Cologne stays in the game, rolls to the right side, this time spun down. Montero and Cadell there, very close to the marker. Officials are signaling to move the chains. Bring up first and goal, we see it on the replay. Lissandro Cologne came off the field saying, that's enough, I'm done, I need a breath. Frankly, don't blame him. He has earned his water break. Running back can take only so many blows before they need a breather. So five yards from goal, Pelcher with Clark to his right. Will throw and woo. Well, that was interesting. But, um, I think they were trying to hit the quick slant, right? I think the ball also may have been deflected as it was released. Keambu Jones got his fingertips on that one. I'm going to say Evan Garvey was the intended receiver. Ultimately led instead of a, spiral, a tight spiral to a wobbly ball. It was an untitled goose pass. 
On second down, Clark looking to the left side. Found the daylight, touchdown Westfield. Westfield State goes up 26 to seven. The Owls are going to take home their first win of the year. Heard a bit of a cheer from the Westfield crowd who have made the trip eastward to Fitchburg. Pull around to attempt the point after. Let's see Clark finding a lot of room and then. Then we get some product placement. It's public access television, so there is no call to action. But hey, look, the That's... Under Armour logo. <laughs> Meanwhile, Corey Pooler has his second unsuccessful extra point of the game in his third of the season as the Falcons get the block to keep it at 26 to 7. Not too often you see a 26-7 score one. I don't think that would be Scorigami though, would that? No. No, I don't think so. It must be somewhere. Even Let's see, how many more John Boys references can we get in? We've had Beef Tank. We've had Beef Tank. The show's called College Football Saturday. It is. Scorigami. That's a John Boys joint. Mm -hmm. Can't force Fumble Dimension in because the first episode was about basketball. So. Steve Lawton is very much living in the fumble dimension today. It's true. Indeed. He's fumbled twice. He has. Okay, that's four. Do we need one more for bingo, or can we just claim the, that we got the free space, too? Well, let's see if the Falcons' progressive offense goes boink. Gallagher with the kickoff. Just obliterates that football to the 10-yard line. Robert Jackson picks it up. Jackson trying to duck out of a couple tackles, gets to the 30-yard line, wants a couple more. It's very impressive that Robert Jackson was able to fight forward for an extra five yards, considering that he had Edward Sullivan wrapped around him. Sullivan makes his initial hit at the 26, and right there, it's basically just a, you know, it's do -si do It's just, you know, spin your partner round and round, give him six extra yards while you're trying to tackle him. Is that how the song goes? It's been too long. That joke was so funny that someone in the truck just smacked their microphone <laughs> very loudly. And that's why I went to a dead stop there. <laughs> <laughs> On first down, throw to Haskins is incomplete. Fitzsimons tries to find Haskins. I think he was just running a quick hitch on the far side. Pass was just a little bit outside his reach where Sean Settles was there providing coverage. So it'll be second down with 8.26 to go in the fourth, 26-7 Westfield. A 20-point second half for the Owls. Lawton finding some space, shaking a couple stiff arms, shaking out of some tackles, down at the 45-yard line. Big gain for our first down. We mentioned on the last drive that Lisandro Colon is just a freshman and may be providing some hope for the future for Westfield State. On a similar note, it's worth noting, Steve Lawton is, as they would say, he's only a sophomore. Only that. There's another pass break up there from Justin Smith. Take a look at this one again. Fitzsimons has plenty of time to throw. Smith's arms go up almost before Fitzsimons releases the pass. Connor still tried to thread the needle and he got rejected. More looking to the future for Westfield, Justin Smith from Medford, he is a freshman. You know, it's, you know, we've talked about it a few times in the years we've been doing this, Dan, the cyclical nature, especially at these lower levels of D3 football, you're not gonna have perennial contending teams, but you have to have some hope for the future, even in an otherwise lost season. Home run pass to no one in particular because one of the Falcons, I think the intended receiver is down on the ground and he's hurt. I believe that's Nelson again. Yeah. Who we saw him come off the field with an injury earlier. He came back in. It's possible he's re-aggravated what he's hurt there. So Nelson's going to be at the upper right corner of your screen. He gets picked there and then just kind of loses his balance and can't regain it. And the ball flo floats harmlessly beyond him incomplete. And Josh Nelson will be tended to on the far sideline. So while we have a moment, folks, we again want to mention the upcoming football telecast schedule 
here on FATV. First of all, this coming Friday, November the 1st, everyone with their Halloween hangovers will get to come down to Crocker Field and see the Red Raiders take on Westboro. Game where uh, Fitchburg wins that. They're probably in the playoffs, we would say. I think they're almost certainly in now, but they probably will get a home game in the postseason. And that home game could well be Friday, November the 8th. This one is not quite set in stone, but as I said earlier, don't make plans. We're thinking there should be a football game Friday the 8th at Crocker Field. And then the day after that will be Senior Day here at Elliott Field, the final Falcon telecast of the season as the Falcons take on WestCon. And then, you know, everybody will have a few weeks off. They'll get to forget how football works just in time for Thanksgiving. It's coming, Fitchburg and Women's Star. Loud noises. I hope it's on a morning this time. As Fitzsimons drops back, throws over the middle. That one is incomplete, but a flag. The flag was thrown well away from the play. Joe Haskins was not the intended receiver, but I think he may have been fouled away from the play. Got a hold. 23 white. So 10 yard penalty and an automatic first down for the Falcons. Called on Rashawn Settles. I'm pretty sure this is going to be at the top of the screen. We don't actually see what results in the flag here, but it's away from the play. Now Settles is nowhere near the intended receiver. Falcons will happily take the yardage, get the first down out of it. We're probably going to see Fitzsimons try to go more pass heavy in this game as the Falcons trailing by what they are. Pass complete to Haskins. Haskins gets over 10 on this one. Down at the 31-yard line, first down for the green and gold. Fitchburg State trailing in this game by three scores. They're also driving into the setting sun. It's been a bit of a pain in the backside for us here in the press box. Can only imagine what it's doing to the Falcon players in their eyesight. The field built, you see, from left to right is east to west as the throw here is intercepted. Elijah Ellis, his second pick of the game. He is somehow still on his feet. They blew the play dead even though he was running forward? Because they felt that he'd been stopped for just enough forward progress. The Falcons will take the break, but Fitzsimons another interception. If it wasn't over before, it may very well be now. He stares down his receiver. We've seen that a few times this season from Connor Fitzsimons. He's trying to force the ball in to Mizzy Jillo Oquendo. I don't believe Jillo Oquendo has a catch all game. And Dan, where in the heck is... I don't understand where Elijah Ellis' forward progress was stopped. But again, the Falcons will take the break. On first down, Clark tripped up in the backfield. Kambu Jones read that well. Halts Clark's his progress to just a yard. I imagine Westfield is probably going to be going run heavy the rest of the way. Oh, you've got to think. Up 19 points. Andrew Pelcher is 3 for 13 through the air. One of those was a Hail Mary where fel the Falcons were content to just not get into the end zone. And then there was a fumble and some laterals and a lot of weird things. That was weird. It's like it counts as a fumble in only the second of the year for the Owls, but really should it count? <laughs> and Clark goes out of bounds there for a gain of a yard or so. Montero had to hit for Pittsburgh. Montero there. There was also a penalty on the play, too. There wasn't a flag on the play. There was one that was thrown, but they've decided, no, that wasn't a penalty. No, it doesn't count. It's fine. I actually saw it through by binoculars, but I was wondering <laughs> if my eyes were playing tricks on me. It could have been a leaf, but no. It was a flag. As it is well into fall here in Fitchburg, the foliage is nice in the backdrop. Oh, it's gorgeous. I mean, it's been a beautiful day for football. No question about that. Pitch out, left side, Clark. 
Going to get just a couple yards. Not nearly enough for a first down. Arnold Cadell Jr. with a nice tackle for the Falcons, fourth down. Started far enough back to the point where I think he may have just lost a couple of feet. Westfield State has had pretty good success with this uh, lateral pitch. It's almost a forward pass, really, to the running back out of that shotgun formation. This time, nothing doing at all. It'll be fourth Proper down and nine. Owls will kick it away. And Crawford. the Falcons have a mathematical chance, if nothing else. Not necessarily out of it, nearly blocked there. Forces that up in the air, it's gonna bounce backwards. Falcons should get away from it. Westfield will just jump on it to try to stop where the ball was, as it was starting to bounce very nicely for Fitchburg. They could actually hit a Westfield player at about the 40 and then bounced further forward. So the officials are gonna to get together and spot it at the Falcon 41 yard line. From their own 42. Connor Fitzsimons and the offense will come back out with exactly five minutes to play in this one, trailing by 19 points. We haven't had a scoreboard update today. We'll do one Before after we this do, next Dan, play. Wait, go ahead. Uh, assuming this game holds, it will be the fifth consecutive game in which the Falcons have scored fewer than 10 points. That's been the challenge. The Falcons, after they gave up that second touchdown, we knew they'd have to have the performance of the season on offense to have a chance to win this game. Their high all season is 13. But Simons rolls out to the right side, home run pass, looks for Haskins. He's got Haskins! Best pass of the day Fitz from Fitz Simons, Simons the starting quarterback to the backup quarterback for a first down. Falcons first and 10 from the Westfield 32. Gets deep into Westfield territory. We'll take a look at this one again. Fitz Simons rolls right, just chucks it up on the run. Haskins has a step on his man. Fitchburg State really hasn't gone to that deep ball all day. This time it works out for him. But Simons wants Haskins. He's going to throw. Tipped up in the air and incomplete. Probably could have ran for a few more yards. He saw Fitzsimons signaling to Haskins. It's almost like you're in Madden and you just flick that right stick, activate the playmaker. He's trying to get Haskins to go deep. He's got all kinds of yardage in front of him, but he's trying to thread it in between two defenders and it's finally deflected away. Rashawn Settles, the one who knocked it out. It's one of those things where I think he was just so committed to going with the pass there that he just didn't think about all the space in front of him. So second and 10 it'll be, but Simon's dropping back again. Rolls to the right, gets a throw off, overthrown for Rittenauer. Good coverage there by Joseph Dumoulin, the freshman from Holyoke. Fitzsimons unable to set his feet on this one. See, he's under pressure, he steps up well. He's throwing, it's basically all arm, all shoulder, as he's trying to get rid of the ball. He's got an arm wrapped around his leg. Wasn't able to get any kind of zip on that one, and it just floated a little bit. Brings up third and 10. Obviously, four down territory. Lynch in the backfield, two receivers to the left. Xavier Hernandez to the right. It's going to be a quick dump off for Lynch. He's got some space to run on the near sideline. Bubba Lynch. It's time to Bubba for a nice game. Inside the 20. Pittsburgh State's had success already once with this screen pass to Bubba Lynch. Fitzsimons sells it well, drops back deep, sets up the owl, sets the owl defensive lineman on him. They totally ignore Bubba Lynch. And now throw to the left side, wants Chilo Aquendo, and that's another interception. Jack Buckley with the pick. Is it me or did Buckley kind of push away from Chilo Aquendo as that ball was in the air? Let's see what the replay shows. I don't think there was a whole lot there. No, I think I think he, he extended his arms definitely, but he didn't really push him away so much as he just reacted to the ball in the air. That's been the thing. They, why does it seem like every time they've tried to throw to Mizzy Jillo Aquendo, there's always an owl there ready to take that ball away? I think that's because that's what's happened. 
Every time, it so seems. Here's your scoreboard update. Framingham beat West Con 39-14. West Con gets their first loss of the year, and Framingham is now in the whole shot to win the MassCAC. Plymouth State beats Mass Maritime in a defensive battle 7-3 in a battle of one-loss teams, I believe it was. And Worcester State is at UMass Dartmouth in a game in which uh, live stats, I can't find them. Or maybe I can't be bothered to find them. <laughs> that game started at 3 o'clock. Worcester State will be Fitchburg's next opponent. I actually play that on a Friday night, Friday, November the 1st at 7th. So while we are at Crocker Field, They'll be down at Coughlin. And Worcester coming into today is also winless. At 0 and 7 as well. So the Falcons definitely had some winnable games, especially you know, winless Westfield. They've had their struggles. Their offense, though, has been fairly good. The defense has been good enough. But boy, just some ill-advised throws, other things. It's another rough day for Connor Fitzsimons, standing at 11 for 28. 101 yards, one touchdown, but three picks. Steve Lawton on the ground, 30 for 144. Great running day for him, lost a fumble, which was a bit rough. Haskins has been the leading receiver today, four catches for 44 yards, had no career catches coming into today. Same with Bubba Lynch, who was two for 27. And Josh Nelson at four for 28, but that injury though, that one goes over Pelcher. He's going to have to eat this one. Snap got away. That's not gone well for Westfield, but just a snap that was a bit too high and just goes through the fingertips. I mean, it's yeah, it's a little going. high. I'm not going to say it was too high. Will they get the tackle? Like, it was at his helmet level. It was a very catchable snap, I think. Remember back in the days of Garrett Delikiai, it was so routine for for the snap to be at around Delikiai's eye level, a little higher than that, it seemed. Mm -hmm. And it was just so routine, he would just put his right arm up, grab the ball with one hand and pull it down. Yep. So many high snaps, but he could just pull those in like it was routine. Oh, absolutely. And I think the Garrett Delikiai era sort of spoiled us too. It's like, if you have a playmaking quarterback, you can get some good things. You can have a team that can have a winning record. Mm -hmm. And well, like we were saying, Dan, it, it comes back to, especially at these levels of D3 college football here in New England, you know, this is not the University of Florida. This is not Texas A&M. This is not USC. No one is spending millions of dollars on quasi-legal recruitment tactics to ensure that the very best young football players in the world decide to get an education at Fitchburg State University. It's very much a challenge in the recruiting department, and the Falcons will be looking to try to improve on it for next Shane year, Mark. especially with the roster being as small as it's been. Got another timeout called here. With 3.31 to go, 26-7. That's West their Field final timeout. West. Actually Fourth couldn't tell who took that timeout because both teams are out of timeouts. 3.31 to go in the fourth, the 26-7 game. Westfield next week is, got the week off, but they'll have Worcester State That's the week after that. So Fit both teams will be taking on the Lancers for their next contest. Fitchburg State, uh, an interesting quirk of the schedule. Their bye week is the last week of the season. They play all their games in a row. The last game of the year will be Senior Day, November the 9th. That game, a 12 noon kickoff right here on FATV. They'll be the first to complete their season. Mass Maritime had a bye in week one, and they also had to play 10 games in a row. But that's just a quirk of how they do things in their non-conference schedule. It is fourth down and 13 to go. Westfield was a man short, so we'll get him on the field now. Waste a perfectly good shot of Dom Vassumption. There's the boot there. Takes a great bounce, pulled in by the Falcons. And Morikita just trying to find Morikita some running room. Gets to the 46-yard line, four yards short of midfield. Now, Dan, I'm going to say something, and I want you to understand, I am not trying to calm the Incredible Hulk. 
-hmm. The sun really is getting real low. Are you noticing that? I am noticing that. It's ducked behind a cloud, and before long, it'll be below the tree line. This is what you get with a, a two o'clock kickoff in late October here in New England. Falcons will have one more chance to try to score here. 202 seconds to go. Pass to the left side is complete, shaking off a tackle there, moving his way upfield. That was Mizzy Jillo Aquendo for his first catch of the day. Jillo Aquendo. Finally, the ball finds his hands. Jillo Okendo gets out into the open field here, spins out of one tackle, puts the juke on another. That play was going to get two, maybe three yards, but Jillo Okendo turns it into a first down. Well done there by the sophomore. Rolling out to the right side on first down. Throw is complete. Xavier Hernandez has his first catch of the season. Good time and pass complete. Xavier Hernandez, the Xavier freshman Hernandez from Abington, Mass., graduate of Cristo Rey. Dean of about five. Question for you, Dan. Yes. Where's Abington, Massachusetts? It's on the South Shore. Thank you. The one thing I remember, the one thing I'll always remember about Abington football was a play that happened about a decade ago in which a backwards pass was ruled an incomplete pass. It cost Abington a touchdown, and their, their announcers went uh, insane. I imagine they were not happy. They were not. But Simon scrambling to the left side. He's going to run with it this time, as he should. He'll be down at the 40-yard line, gains a few yards out of it. Gets about four. Could have gone a whole lot worse. Absolutely could have. But Simon's under pressure, keeps it himself. He's, a, he's not the biggest guy on the field, Connor Fitzsimons, and Jadis Morrison might be, but Morrison was able to bring him down. Fitzsimons rolling to his right. He's probably thinking about running again. He's going to have to. And he wanted to throw it downfield. He just couldn't find anybody open. And we've seen in the past a number of quarterbacks here at Fitchburg State who are more than happy to take the ball and run with it. Of course, we mentioned... Garrett Delicchi, the most extreme example, probably Jeremy Kimber, the years he was the quarterback here. Fourth and six. Connor Fitzsimons decides, I can't find anybody open and I don't feel like getting hit, so I'll just take it out of bounds. It does bring up fourth down. The Falcons will go for it. It's six to go, so an encroachment's not going to give them a first down this time. They're actually going to have to make a completion. And Fitzsimons looking, throws, and that one's complete to Lawton. At the 30-yard line, ball comes out. It's fallen on by Will Stephen Jamison. Jamison's slow to get up. That football to the midsection there. That can't be pleasant. So we'll take a look at it here. Lawton makes the catch at about the 30. It's spun around again. Oh, he is well down before that ball comes loose. And they have spotted it at the 29. Okay. So they did actually call that Falcons play down. I think even if they hadn't given that, the Falcons still would have gotten the first down. But it is uh, fortunate for Fitchburg State as they try to get some more points on the board here. Couple receivers to the left side. He'll throw to the right. And that one is incomplete. incomplete. Jake Cassidy nearly putting the dagger in this one. Kilo Okendo, the intended receiver. Second and Simons ten. delivers a nice tight spiral. Cassidy jumps it. I, you know, I mentioned that this is not, you know, Texas A&M, USC, that kind of football. We also don't have 15 cameras surrounding the field to get you a better shot of that one. So we'll take the official's word for it that that ball hit the ground. Might have been trapped in there. If it wasn't trapped in there, then I don't know what to tell you. Falcons will take it. Second down. Go to the left side. Going to throw downfield. Wants Haskins. Got a hand on it. Incomplete. Nothing more than that. Haskins had Elijah Ellis all over him. 
Haskins, the intended receiver. Just a bit too high there. But then again, he was able to at least get the airtime to get a hand on it. It was going to be challenging. Then if it was any lower, maybe Elijah Harris might have had his third pick of the day. Who knows? Or, or Jack Buckley with his second. They were the ones in the vicinity. Pittsburgh State has no timeouts left. They break the huddle 10 seconds on the play clock. Have to get something off pretty quickly. Lawton in motion well in the backfield. Now he's looking at him. Going to float this one up. Found Lawton incomplete into triple coverage. Pass calls incomplete. Lawton the intended Joe receiver. Joe Dumoulin was the closest owl there. Fourth and Once ten. again, Fitzsimons unable to properly set his feet. Just kind of chucks it up there. Pass floats on him into triple coverage. He was lucky it wasn't intercepted. So 81 seconds left. The Falcons four for seven on fourth down. Again, it's amazing they've had this many tries at fourth down. Well, early in the game, I said it was because they had this, you know, dink and dunk offense that got three and four yards at a time. Now it's you're losing 26-7, so why not go for it? Of course. See if the Falcons get a fifth conversion on fourth down today. But Simon squaring up, looking for six, into double coverage. Diving forward and not being able to Ten pull it in. There's, There's a flag. A flag Was intended for Riddenauer. Flag came in from the back judge on the other side of the play. May well be against the Owls. The real question is, what on earth is the referee going to say? He's been a man of few words today. Never the same words twice. 37 white, defense, defensive pass interference. Automatic first down, 15 yards. So Joe Dumoulin is called for the pass interference penalty. See if we can spot it here. Dumoulin is 37. He's there at the top of the screen. He's not really. I think he's actually pulling the arm of Rittenauer. Okay. He's also standing between Rittenauer and the football, which is totally legal. It was a very awkward positioning from the two players, but I think he pulled on Rittenauer's arm. That prevented him from having a chance at the ball. This one is incomplete to Xavier Hernandez. Just overthrown. Will Jamison's got his hands up saying, I'm not doing anything as lots of things happen. Way more laundry out on the field. Boy, I'm glad I'm not working. Boy, I'm glad I'm not playing street hockey at five o'clock today. I'm glad I said I couldn't call that game because there's no way I'd make it in time. No, no, there really isn't. Will Jamison and Peter Spinelli were exchanging pleasantries with one another. Um, making dinner reservations, perhaps. So let's see how we want to call this one. Offsetting fouls. Personal foul on the offense, personal foul on the defense. Offset, replay the down. Okay. Yep. I mean, that's pretty much what happened. It's exactly what happened. Who cares who it was? Just yeah, one sure. player on each team did a bad thing. It all cancels out. Who cares? Second down. Pretty much. 69 seconds left. 26-7. Westfield in front. It's Simons looking to the right corner. It, looking for Hernandez. But it's broken up by Jake it's Cassidy. Xavier Hernandez was in the end zone. Got his hands on the football. Would have been his first career touchdown reception. We'll take a look at this one again. Oh, he's got to make that catch. I don't think Cassidy got a hand on the football. I think Hernandez just tried to close his grasp around it and only got like the nose of the ball rather than the meat of it. And he was unable to secure the catch. Just under that pressure, wasn't able to make it. Two receivers on both sides, but Simons will find a completion there. That pass is complete. Mizzy Jillo Quendo the catch. Reception. And out of bounds to stop the clock. Sure was game. out of bounds. Or they'll keep the clock rolling there. So he had to come well back to get that. Driven to the ground by Jack Buckley. And now the Falcons five for eight on fourth down. And they make it a very nice six for nine. 
Well, let's see what they can do. Fitzsimons rolling right side. He's going to go for the end zone, and it's overthrown for Joe Haskins. And this time, there is no flag to save the Falcons drive, and they're going to be held to single figures yet again. It will be a sixth consecutive loss for Fitchburg State, the fifth in which they have scored seven points or fewer. Haskins, he had a good look at it. Uh, the offenses are still on the field, actually. Were we miscounting the downs? Possibly. Let's say we were, and now it's fourth down. Never mind. All right, so it is now fourth down. We did have a miscount there. Try it again. Fitzsimons again going for the end zone. No. I think he was going for the soccer goal. Turn it over on down. Boy, how deflating that felt, watching that ball sail through the air and have not even a ghost of a chance. For Westfield State, Dan, let's focus on some positives. They get their first win of the season. They did. Pete Kowalski is going to get his revenge on Elliott Field. He is. He broke his leg here, and now he breaks the Falcons in a metaphorical football way by beating them. That's how it works, right? Something like that. 20 points for the Owls in the second half. Their defense, one of the worst in the nation, shuts out the Falcons in the second half. And one kneel down is all it'll take for Westfield State to get their first win of the season. They take it 26 to seven. As always, folks, we want to thank our football underwriters who help bring this and every telecast to you here on FATV. They include Romano's Market, 138 Harvard Street here in Fitchburg, the Neshoba Valley Medical Center, 200 Rotten Road in Ayer, IC Credit Union, 300 Bemis Road in Fitchburg, Red Apple Farm, 455 Highland Ave in Phillipston, Fitchburg State University, headquartered at 160 Pearl Street in Fitchburg, Grand Rental Station, 88 Mass Ave in Lunenburg, and of course, North End Subaru, 757 Chase Road in Lunenburg. And Dan, we would be remiss if we did not and also thank our Tonight annual underwriters as well. That's correct. Line. Our annual underwriters are Rollstone Bank, please. Workers Credit Union, Unitil, Health Alliance Hospital, Mart, Fitchburg State University, Minuteman Press, the Sentinel and Enterprise, Hub International, and North End Subaru. So Dan, the Falcons fall to one and seven on the season with a 26 to seven defeat here at the hands of Westfield. They'll be on the road next week against Worcester State, but there is one more home game. It is senior day here at Elliott Field. Two weeks from today, they'll be taking on WestCon here on FATV. It will be an interesting contest to say the least. It will be. But at the very least, tune in for senior day. And I will not be here, so good luck. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, thanks as well to our FATV crew, our director today, John Dextrace, Travis Falk, our technical supervisor, Jared Roberts running replay, and our excellent camera crew, Nicole Gaffney, Matt Murdocka, Matt Macris, Josh Gargan, Antonio Garcia, and Kevin Newey. Our next football telecast again will be this coming Friday as the Red Raiders host Westboro, 7 o'clock kickoff at Crocker Field. You will be there, I will be there. It's going to be a very exciting game as the Red Raiders will look to solidify their playoff spot in the Division IV playoffs and get back into the postseason for the first time in several years. For Dan Bolak, I'm John Googerty. Thank you so much for watching us here. This has been College Football Saturday on FATV. <laughs>